Welcome back to the Shady Harbor with uh, me, Little Fox. Um, yeah. Hold on. Can I hear myself? Hmm. Yeah. Sound is okay, I guess. I don't know how to make sound sound better, honestly. I am not a whiz at that. But yay! Yes, it is Sunday night, and I am back online. Back in on it. <sighs> now I have a mirror there as well, I can see myself. It's uh, very weird. Very interesting new setup I've got here. I've got a, I've got a um, gaming uh, mat, which is again also interesting in that it um, doesn't really it, it, the the wheels of my chair do not uh, seem to like to move around a lot. That might be what people enjoy. It's not necessarily what I do. But, um, yeah, let's jump back in. We're still under the dark part of Skyrim. <sighs> so there's a lot more stuff we can do now. And we wait. I have internet, by the way, which is good. My streaming seems to be doing well. Bitrate is nice and clean. So I think I've missed one of the rewards, or two of the rewards. Lame. Oh well. I'll get the Sailor at Arms one. And the gold! 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 Alright. Doing the dailies. Oh, shit. Now where... Which Harrow Storm is running right now? Be off, Reeker! Ard Kadok refuses to see you! Now go! Before I gut you! The Ard needs to hear what I have to say, my friend. It is imperative that we speak. So I've been to that one, I've been to that one. It's not doing it. Which one should I go towards? Should go for that one, maybe. Yeah. Be off, Reeker. Ard Kadok refuses to see you. Now go before I gut you. The Ard needs to hear what I have to say.
So many resources in this in this uh, in DLC area. Oh, that one just showed up. I guess that's the one I'm going towards. Oh, we grinding. I'm getting hurt. I'm getting hurt. What the hell is going on? There doesn't seem to be anyone... Any way of doing stuff. Combat has started. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck? What, what the fuck just happened? Natural witch storms. Nothing but reach stories, mark my words. I don't think we're the first to camp here. Lots of fresh Some plants. bullshit. Get some rest. The guards will watch over us. Is that the internet, maybe? That's fucking annoying. That's bloody ridiculous. Oh, well, I'm right next to the uh, uh, treasure map there at spot, I guess. So we're going to head towards that. Guess that I shall just continue. 
discovering shit around here and head back and just wait. Oh, hey, buddy. Got him. Oh, hello. The other guy. Hey, Samantha, how's it going? Bang! Friggin' got him. Where's, where's, where's my water? Oh, I can't get the water? Oh, yeah, there it is. You doing great? Yay! That's awesome. It's good to hear. Ooh. A dope we can, huh? Oh no! Alright, I'm hoping that it actually loads this time. People are coming here, so maybe it's about to start. It's too quiet. Nothing exciting ever happens around here. I think the clouds are turning. We should prepare for a stormy night. Have faith. The gods won't lead us astray. Oh no, they definitely won't. Oh hey. That one's going off. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. Do 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 do. Oh, oh that's silly. The Harrow Storm. You got drunk, smoked, made out, and was play fighting. Play fighting. Get some wrestling done. very shortly. Hopefully. Unless it's like moved on to one of these two. Oh no, it's this one. Yep. What's all these scratches in the dirt? Some sort of ritual. The skies are full of dark clouds. Oh yeah. I'm just trying to remember what I've got buttons mapped to. Oh, what the f- Did it. Oh, and a heavy sack. Alright, now I go back to... 
little rain won't hurt you. I hear some more more prayer and less complaints would do all. <sighs> It must have been a lot of fun. <laughs> I want to get my snacks soon. Be though. off, Reeker. Ard Kadok refuses to see you. Now go before I gut you. The Ard needs to hear what I have to say. These outsiders get crazier every day. Saw the sky. Finally, no reports of Harrow storms on. All right, now. Ardent flame increased. Nice. Where am I going? Daily endeavouring completed. Oh, nice. Getting all the cool stuff. What? Western Skyrim. All right. While that's loading, I'm going to be getting some snacks. Singing a song about getting this next Whoa. Two clicks, baby. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Test your wits and courage in a brand Another new day. card I game. Sharp young blood. The holds are in peril. What's the peril? What the sword okay, let's get those harrow stones.
Ah. Oh wait. Oh wait, no, good. Just in time. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors. Test your wits and courage in a brand new card what game. Is it? Tales of Tribute. Uh, of course you did. Alright, we did. Alright, did I get any good loot? Find out soon. Not for sailing. Two venomous rings. I just need one more eternal vigor item, and then I've got like some sweet ass stuff. Ring of the Void Caller. Drunken Werewolf Held. That's gross. And another Rage Treasure Map. Okay. Another Void Caller Ring. Some more treasure. Oh, style page. We've already unlocked this one. Okay. Venomous Jack. I'm pretty sure that this one. Yeah, I still can't open that one. Um, glorious box of Greyhost pillage. Oh. Nice. Hmm. 
Oh, wow. That one's like a lot. Winter's respite? Yeah, that's not too bad. What else? What else? What else? There we go, the Markarth re reward coffers. Void callers. I don't know. I need. Lightning staff for the void caller. <coughs> Have me. <coughs> Have me again. Bind it. Um. Daily reward coffer. Ooh, another eternal vigor. Unfortunately, it's not what I need. I can bind it. Not the station I want. No, there is that. Oh no, it's right. This, this station's inside. The radiant arraignment. That's three days, one day. There we go, 19 hours. One day, 19 hours? Yes. Very good. Embroidery. Okay. Once all the clothes work done, let's find a bang. Hope you're enjoying your time in solitude.
I wonder how... I wonder if I can um, increase my character space now. That guy looks cool. Now, question. Where is the pack seller? Pack seller. Pack merchant is across the road. Merchant, nope, well, actually. Elsewhere has always. Mail materials. You need more hiding spots. Oh, I can do it. Happened upon it. Oh yeah, 169. <laughs> nice. How much more do I need to do? I think. One Dell. Yes, I know I can't afford to, but it's beside the point. Wait, 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 wait. Um This is the crown store, right? Yep. Yeah. Crown store. I'm not buying an upgrade, I just wanna check. Where are we at? Oh my gosh, I'm only one away. Damn! And I'm only two away from that. That's so cool. I do have I do have a bunch of crayons. What's featured by the way? Furnishing pack. No. Ooh, equipment stations. What? Well, <sighs> Dwarven correct. Event quest. Oh, I've already got that one. Yeah. This would be nice. Oh. Lame. Oh well. Looking good for now, Neil. Alright, where's my, um... Exit. Yes. I've got my bag upgrade! I'm all ready for the next thing. Oh, that's right, I need to do the... Today's red. Rigged. I need to find out what, um, the... The master crafting writs uh, entail as well. So that's where you get all the cool stiff versus dust. Equipment crafting grids, yes. A crash. What the, what the goodness name? What in goodness name is a crash? What the hell do I need? Fresh fiber. Where the hell did I get that from? CP10. Okay. Really, do they have to call it CP? Well, I can't do that.
Alright. Now it is time to move on to the rest of the characters. <laughs> Doing them grand. I think that's actually really good. I also need to do the horse upgrade. Yes. I've already completed the the rip. Back to it. Alright, where is it? Well, that bit's done. Would you like to do something worthwhile? I want to get whatever that is. That thing was awesome.
five. Saved our high and mighty me. queen, eh? Ha! Huh. Naaman should have had the crown. Hear ye, card sharps and collectors! Test your wits and courage in a brand new card game. Tales. Let's start building some shit. Not much we can build, but we can. Mm, yeah. Oh well. Jota, what is this? Jota. Grand glyph of stamina. Ooh. Oh, wow, that really is grand. Derado Oko Jijota Hora Oko Jijota. Rado Oko Jijota Hora Oko Jijota Hora Oko Jijota Hora Oko Jijota Hora Oko Damn, I'm gonna keep on making the same glyph. Hora Oko Jijota Hey, Monkey Kaiba! Welcome back! Alright, can't do any more enchanting. Giving people to food and a place to eat is evil. Apparently. That's dirty blood. Oops. No. Ugh, I mean. Oh yes, that's right, there's the, um, thingy-me. The jewelry. There's nothing I can research yet, though. I can just deconstruct at this point. Hey, 
anti-China propaganda is dumb and cringe. Yeah. I mean, if there's so many things that you can criticize China for. I don't know why they bother making up shit. Although I guess, like, the made up shit is, like, makes the Western countries look better, maybe? Or at least, you know, they think that it does. Dust and snowberries, or oh, yeah. It's only evil in China, though, then. Boy. What are we looking at? State-run canteens scare the Chinese. Planned economy 2.0. What is China Insights? This is weird. Comment section is incredible. <laughs> the weirdest flex I've ever seen. Free food and shelter. State run canteen is open for business. Let's try how the food tastes in a state-run canteen. On October 31st, 2022, China's Ministry of Housing and but Construction and Ministry of Civil Affairs issued a joint notice requesting each city and region to select three to five communities to start a pilot project of building a complete community. The plan is to implement the idea nationwide in two years' time. It's to construct large packages of essential services, including communal canteens. Previously, we reported that the Chinese government has been expanding supply and distribution cooperatives throughout the country. These are all signs that the Planned Economy version 2.0 is starting up in China after the 20th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party ended. Let's look at communal canteens first. According to the announcement, the relevant ministries will select a number of models of complete communities and propagate them nationwide. The provincial levels housing and construction and civil affairs departments will organize three to five communities in each city or region to pilot the complete community construction. A complete community has a population between 5,000 to 12,000 people. What is with this uptalk? Can you hear the uptalk in this? No, damn it, damn it, internet common, common um, etiquette you, has destroyed my brain. And provides comprehensive public services and management, including kindergartens, childcare centers, senior service centers, community health services, convenience stores, grocery stores, canteens, etc. 
providing residents with one-stop services. Building a communal canteen has attracted the most public attention among all the items. On the Chinese social media platform Weibo, netizens are having heated discussions about the need to build communal canteens in neighborhoods. Many netizens have left comments. For example, some said, "It's crazy. Something is coming back. Whoever cooks at home in the future will have their doors busted and pots and pans <laughs> smashed." Wait, wait. So that, so that, so they're like complaining that because there's free food, they're not not going to be allowed to cook their own food. What the fuck? Okay. I'm afraid they're going to lock you up in the neighborhood and not allow you to buy groceries, so you can use the canteen voluntarily. Since the beginning of 2022, oh, for goodness communal... sake! For goodness sake, though, like if they're going to move towards like making like a capital capitalist system of uh, food production, if they're moving away from that, this is what th th that that that's. <laughs> Communism is when no home cooking. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Fucking hell. Oh my god. Canteens have been operating on a pilot basis in various This is this is this is like um social services is communism gone wild. Holy moly. Parts of China, such as Shanghai, Xi'an, and Shenyang, where a number of neighborhoods have been testing it out. The concept was created after the 20th Communist Party Congress in mid-October and eventually started to roll out on a large scale. It Wait, this guy's Canadian. This guy, this guy's Canadian. Why are they always? Why is why is why is it always the fucking from someone from Canada, from South Africa or Australia, and they've moved to America, and and then now they now they're spewing dumbass shit. In conjunction with the government document, the Chinese official media has started to publicize the communal canteens. It included running stories with titles like. Five thousand state-run canteens are to be built in Hebei Province. Okay. <laughs> okay. When netizens reacted negatively to the communal canteens, the official <gasps> wait. What are netizens? What are netizens? Wait. So basically, just ran. <laughs> okay. So he's just the he's instead of like talking about what like Chinese people think, he's talking about random people on the internet criticizing China, and China turning around and being all like, "Fucking, I don't give a fuck." The media Holy then moly. made various so-called clarifications and dispelled rumors. For example, the media claimed that the communal canteens were mainly for the convenience of the elderly in the community. And for the online story that's widely shared, titled "Five Thousand State-Run Canteens to Be Built in Hebei Province," the media claimed that the government bulletin didn't contain clear requirements on who were to operate the canteens. The media explained that all kinds of catering institutions, school canteens, workplace canteens, etc., were included. We checked the government bulletin from Hebei Province in June this year on the launch of nutrition and health restaurants or communal canteens. Indeed, there was no clear requirements as to who is to operate the canteens. However, there is no mention of which types of catering establishments can operate so community restaurants either. The bulletin reads: The province has a target of no less than 5,000 canteens by 2025. Municipal governments and relevant departments should develop work plans and implementation programs around reasonable diets and reduction of salt, sugar, and oil. Clarify the organization and staffing of the construction of nutritious and healthy restaurants, and establish systems for raw material procurement, nutritional and health management, salt, oil, and sugar procurement, ledgers, and systems. What? What the fuck? You're just reading out like normal shit. None of this. None of this is. None of this is scary. It's only scary to people who don't understand what you're talking about. You're just. All he's doing is explaining how a canteen runs. This is like when I was in primary school and I needed to write a report on it, something, and then I looked it up on Wikipedia or something, or like not primary school, high school. Sorry, I looked it up on the internet and just like. Um. Uh, just, just, just copy pasted uh, like Wikipedia. It's just like he copy pasted everything. He's just reading out the basic, uh, basic shit, as if, as if that's scary in and of itself. 
This is just the government providing for its citizens, my, my dude. Oh, you got to be brain broke. We're so brain broken in the West that as soon as a government um, talks about, like, providing shelter and uh, food for people in the community for free, um, we lose our fucking minds. We can't understand it. It's just so weird to me. Systems for preventing and restraining food waste. Food service operators and individual unit canteens are encouraged to establish a registration system for the use of salt, oil, and sugar, including various condiments containing salt, oil, and sugar, regularly record the number of people attending each meal, and monitor yep. the per capita intake. Yep. That is to say, the Chinese Communist government will pay close attention to the dining issue of Chinese people. Yep. Behind these meticulous statistics, the CCP is likely to try to figure out how much food, including salt, oil, and sugar, etc., per capita is needed to sustain the basic survival of a nation. From the central to the local government circulars, it is unclear who will run these communal canteens and other essential services, and whether they will be run entirely by the state. We suspect that the CCP has chosen to avoid it during the initial stage because this is such a sensitive matter. It's to both test the waters and to give the public a chance to gradually accept the reality of state-run canteens. China What's wrong with state-run canteens, though? The reality of state-run canteens is like, well, yeah, the, the, the people are... It, it's socialism. It's, it's, well, it's market so socialism, like, and recording all of those statistics is important when you're trying to run, a, like, a socialist society. It's much better than, it, it is so much better than, um, uh, th th than, like, relying on the free market, because when you, like, record shit and, and work out shit, um, you can do better basically you can figure out you can figure out food deserts and try and get um like the proper amount of nutrition to certain areas like this is all good things that we're talking about here all of this is good like this is all good why you're being weird Chinese media coverage of communal canteens has been mainly positive, arguing from the perspective of them being cheaper in price and more generous in quantity. For yeah. example, this state-run canteen in Yunnan, a southwestern province, opens its doors offering a combo of three meat dishes plus two vegetable dishes for 19 RMB, or $2.60 US, with free fruit. It's a pity Chinese people don't buy it, as someone wrote, only a fool would say that this product of planned economy is good. So someone was making a capitalist argument against, uh, like, a socialist policy. <laughs> okay, like, okay, okay, like, this, this system is bad because one person, one comment I found online said that the market would be destroyed. Good? <laughs> Use the power oh. to screw up private enterprises in large numbers. In time, the peasants will be exploited dry by them, the market will lose its vitality, there will be fewer jobs, the consumer power will be destroyed, what? and the whole incentive to- In whole incentive to produce will be gone- No, none of that is true. Yeah, that's only true under a free market system, but like, China is a planned economy, it is a- it is a- it is market socialism, it is- it is a controlled market. Like, the incentive to produce will be gone doesn't make sense because there will always be an incentive to work, there will always be jobs, like this is... The free market does not create jobs. Get- stop, stop. Yeah. Oh, so like, get that- get that thought out of your mind. The free market does not create jobs, it just creates wealth for the wealthy. That's- that's all it does, right? Um, jobs are generally generally created by uh, government initiatives that um, that uh, the free market takes advantage of. It's just another way of running a society that you obviously don't understand.
and you're scared of because you don't understand it. It's it's hilarious. And Reduce also, will be gone. It's ridiculous at the end of the day. Why then do state-run canteens discuss the Chinese people so much? What? Because in the 1950s and 60s, the public canteen was born in China, along with the Great Leap Forward and the People's Commune movement. It yep. had the characteristics of one shared big pot of rice, giving it an egalitarian connotation, meaning everyone has equal access to food, and embodying yep. people's illusion of communism. Mao Zedong, the first party leader at the time, regarded public canteens as the most important issue of the Great Leap Forward in the People's Commune. At a meeting, he made it clear that public canteens, where meals are free of charge, are communism. It showed that the Communist Party at the time wanted not only to implement a system of full and unrestricted public ownership in order to control the political and economic life of the entire society, but also to impose a communal lifestyle, forcing its way into the private sphere and controlling the decisions of individual life. The result of free meals was dis so 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 basically you've got a choice between forcing people into a capitalist system where they're exploited by um like by individuals with large amounts of money uh, or to vote on your government and have like an actual say over how your uh, government is run like let's not forget that china the chinese people um have almost have have over 90 percent um approval rating for uh the government in china like the na the national government they, 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 it has a very high approval rating and this is coming from western sources as well so like it seems like the people are pretty happy with these policies and these decisions so I don't know why you're, like, having a big problem with this. You just like free market capitalism at the end of the day, I think. Disastrous. It was followed by a great famine that resulted in massive death. Thus, state-run canteens are associated with ideas like communism, a planned economy, and famine. The truth is... How many famines has uh, China had um, since, 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 like, uh, Mao, Mao Zedong? How many famines have they had versus, um, you know, uh, food shortages and uh, all of that that uh, happened in the West in similar similar economies? Like, how many, uh, like, financial crashes has uh, China suffered through um, as opposed to America? The genes that run in the blood of the CCP remain the same, no matter how many years have passed. On October 27th, just after the 20th Communist Party Congress, CCP leader Xi Jinping led the new Politburo Standing Committee and visited the Red Holy Land of Yan'an. The firm and correct political direction was the essence of the Yan'an spirit. In 1938, when replying to the question, what should be learned at the Military and Political University of Resistance against Japanese aggression in Yan'an, Comrade Mao Zedong pointed out, First and foremost, we need to learn about a political direction. All party members must adhere to the correct political direction, resolutely implement the party's basic theory, line and policy, and thoroughly implement the party central committee's decisions and plans, so as to further advance the great cause pioneered by revolutionaries of the older generation. Why is the Chinese Communist regime so keen to emulate the practices of Mao Zedong's era now? The root of this regressive and erratic behavior in Beijing can be understood if we recognize the context in which the CCP is in. That is, preparing for war and drought, addressing a soon-to-be collapsed economy, specifically preparing for war against Taiwan and confrontation with the U.S. The CCP needs to mobilize military and civilian supplies to effectively prepare for war as it gets... We're talking about free food for people in the community. Where are you fucking taking this? This is the weirdest flex. Close to going to war on Taiwan. As we've reported a week ago, the long-banished supply and distribution co-ops have also begun to resurface in China. The supply and distribution agencies, China's supply and distribution co-ops, the convenience service centers, Dongba has already started it. Beijing has already opened them. 
the supply and distribution agencies that unify the purchase and sale of goods. In the 20th Congress of the CCP, which just ended in October 2022, Liang Huiling, the director of the All-China Federation of Supply and Distribution Societies, was promoted to the Central Committee. It indicates the political status of the supply and distribution societies has rocketed. The General Supply and Distribution Society has now become a ministerial level unit under the State Council of China, although the former director didn't have the same political status as a member of the Central Committee. Accordingly, news of the growing development of supply and distribution agencies has been featured in the Chinese media, such as the story of Hebei Province has expanded the rural supply and distribution system fivefold. Okay, so we're we talking about like their food supply, food supply becoming better, or are we talking about famine here? Like, what do you do? You not understand how dumb you sound right now. In five years, in Ningxia City in northwest China, the coverage rate of rural level supply and distribution cooperatives reached ninety two point seven percent. In Chongqing City in the southwest, the number increased to over six thousand, with a coverage rate of seventy six percent. To date, China has close to 3,000 county-level supply and distribution co-ops and nearly 40,000 grassroots ones, with a coverage rate of nearly 100% at the township that's level. That's amazing! That's amazing! Like that's that's good. <laughs> In mainland China's depressed A share stock market, guess what sector is the hottest recently? It isn't the technology sector, nor the military, the real estate, or financial sectors. It sounds like they've learnt from the problems of the past, and they're investing in agriculture in more intelligent ways than Mao did. Like, look into the history of the famine, um, the the famine and the agricultural failures of uh, Mao. Mao, like, actually look into the reasoning behind that. Like, they experimented and failed fucking big time, um, and they've learned from that, obviously, and are doing better. But now you're talking about like um, free food for people. Um, Free food equal famine. Okay. It's the concept stocks of supply and distribution cooperatives. A list of such stocks and other similar ones have surged in their price. It is this is this a free market, dude? Like, basically explaining why co-ops are like actually fantastic and amazing. Like, is that what this guy is doing? This is in Hebei Province, Hebei Supply and Distribution Cooperative. They can set up a stall out on the curb. If it were other private entities, their stuff would have been confiscated. But the Supply and Distribution Cooperative, feel free to have a stall outside. This is Herping Li, the Supply and Distribution Co-op is bull. They can set up stalls outside at will. But other stores, if they try to sell vegetables at their own storefront, their stuff would have been confiscated long ago because the front of the stores is supposed to be cleaned up. This is the advantage of the Supply and Distribution Cooperative. They can beat the supermarkets without any problem. Good. You're explaining how the government is... The... I... This person is showing how a government can positively influence um, society. Like, that, you're teaching me about how awesome the, that the Chinese government is right now. Like, they, they're literally making it um, hard for free, the free market to exist while incentivizing and making profitable and easier um, workers' co-ops. That's like quite literally the, the chinese government is democratizing democratizing the workforce this is like the opposite of the usual propaganda what the fuck i don't even know about this stuff you've brought up like a really good point that makes the chinese government look fucking awesome they're doing the opposite of, um, they're doing the opposite of totalitarianism. Literally, they're making, they're increasing democracy in their country. Holy shit. And, and you're saying that this is a bad thing. What is wrong with you? I, 
I, I, I, I can't even like come up with like anything more I can say about that. They're literally just this is the biggest self own I have ever seen. Biggest cell phone. Amazing. <laughs> In official Chinese documents, supply and distribution co-ops are described as cooperative economic organizations of farmers, and their English name is also co-op, a common form of farmer cooperation in Europe yeah. and the US. However, peasants in China don't have their own land, and their lives are controlled by the government. State no, 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 that's not how it works. In in China and in Vietnam, like, owning land, they do own their land, collectively, everyone, together. Like, that's how it works in in um, in countries like China and Vietnam. Um, they get leased, they, they, they lease the land, but that goes back to the government, i.e. the people. Like, <sighs> it run canteens and supply and distribution cooperatives were once a standard part Yeah, critical support to China, but the fact that they're democratizing the workplace is fucking based as fuck. ...of China's deeply planned economy from the 1950s to the 1970s. In conjunction with these two were stamps of all sorts such as food, oil, meat, cloth, etc. The public relied on government-issued stamps to purchase the necessities of life through the co-ops. At that time, the co-ops monopolized almost all market distribution channels through government resources. Ordinary people had to go through them to buy and sell goods. The products produced by rural or home-based workshops had to be sold to the designated co-ops, or else they could be charged with the crime of opportunistic peddling. Later, as the reform and opening up started to happen, transportation became more convenient, supplies more abundant, and a large national market started to form with the rise of various individual and private stores, sending the supply and distribution cooperative system slowly into history. As foreign capital started to enter China, the supermarkets rose, and so did online e-commerce. The supply and distribution co-ops, once all over China, were gradually eliminated by the market and consumers under the competition of new consumption methods and consumer yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. Until 2014, a pilot comprehensive reform of supply and distribution cooperatives was included in the CCP's 2014 work highlights, and was once again included in the central government's number one document and work report. The All-China Federation of Supply and Sales Cooperatives recently issued a recruitment notice, stating that in 2023 it will recruit nationwide hundreds of thousands of clerks with bachelor's degrees and even graduate students as its employees with the status of public servants. The recent revival of communal canteens and supply and distribution cooperatives suggests yeah, that like, the Communist let, Party's let... return to a highly government-controlled economic model has been rolled out on a large scale after a long period of planning. We draw on the views of a. So, so let me let me translate that for you. Um, basically, uh, they had they had uh, democratized uh, workforce. Um, they were re they relied on an influx of foreign uh, monetary aid and basically used the West to uh, increase um, the amount of money within their borders to try and like basically exploit the West's um, uh, exploitation of themselves together uh, and shared that profit. In amongst themselves rather than like a capitalist country putting all of the money towards the rich and the powerful yes china has um similar problems they have they do have um you know an oligarchy uh, uh, well maybe not an oligarchy in control but they do have people who have a, a there is um definitely inequity between the rich and the poor within china 100 percent um but unlike Capitalist countries, a lot of the wealth is shared. Um, a lot of, a lot of, it, well, when there's billionaires or millionaires in China, often they tend to go missing or they uh, voluntarily donate their uh, money to uh, the government, i.e., the uh, government of the people, the people's government, like where things are owned collectively. In a nutshell, they had co ops. The free market uh, was introduced. This is a problem that happens within a lot of uh, uh, communist countries. The capitalism does corrupt. Um, and uh, now they're trying to pull back those um, the mistakes made by allowing the free market into their borders. They have the they have the um, 
um, financial viability to push back against free market policies. Basically, that's all they're doing is trying to like remove the free market because the free market is a piece of shit. China expert living in the U.S. to provide a more specific analysis. Today, supply and distribution cooperatives and large communal canteens are mutually supportive and organically integrated. It can be presumed that once they are fully rolled out, one of them will be in the rural areas. Kill them. This is amazing. Come on. Covering China's countryside and peasants, the other will be in the cities, controlling the rice bowls of urban residents. The okay. supply and distribution cooperative. Again, like having a planned economy, having the information about how much your population eats, how much they need, is better than just allowing random private citizens to like make to sh make choices uh, about uh, other people's needs. Like, it's better to plan this shit than it is to simply rely on. Fucking chance. I kind of want that follower, by the way. I think I think that's a merchant. I think I can talk to it. So we'll monopolize the purchase and sale of grain, vegetables and fruits, and the food, oil, fruits and vegetables they provide will become the basis for cost control. Yeah, yeah co co cooperation between the farmers and the point of sale, I guess, for lack of a better, ter better term, is better. Yeah, they're trying so hard to make, um, the thing is, they're not even trying to make them look bad, they're just basically saying that they're bad. That's all they're doing, they're saying that they're bad, because they're bad. It, it, they're so terrified of not having a free market that they can't, they just can't, they just can't um, comprehend the idea that uh, this system would be appreciated and loved by people. Uh, which it is. That's just a, that's just how it is. The the Chinese people approve of their government, and if you don't like that, well, I think that's just your fucking problem, bro. Well, in the state-run canteens, which will also be the largest customers of the co-ops in the cities and towns. Sucks that they approve that uh, they've got a ninety percent approval rate after the 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 Uyghur um, cultural genocide, though. Just want to bring that up. Yes, I call that a yes. I call that a genocide. Um, fuck you, China, for uh, cultural genocide. See, I can both sides shit. The supply and distribution co-ops and the public canteens located upstream and downstream in the food chain will both come under the jurisdiction of the government and slowly... Okay, this guy is eating s I'm eating a- I, I, I bought a skiva kebab. I don't control know what a kebab all is. the sources of goods and upstream agricultural products. As a result, they will be able to control the market and prices. It is likely that under the Communist Party's planning, peasants will be obliged to sell their produce to the government, i.e. the supply and distribution co-ops and private restaurants and snack bars in the cities will end up facing price increases or supply cuts. City residents will find themselves with no choice but to eat in the canteens, without customers in the city's restaurant. I mean, like... Let's, let's, go, let's go with what he's saying here, saying that um, eventually it'll be, there'll only be state-run um, canteens and there'll only be state-run co-ops, right? Or state-sanctioned um, co-ops. Um, why is that a problem? Again, I would rather be able to vote on who has control over basic resources rather than a rich person being able to buy his way into resources. Whether you think that the voting is real or not in China, it is still better then billionaires just being able to buy what the fuck they want when they want.
it is still better. You cannot tell me that, like, that that that, that the that uh, the free market system is a better system than state-run and state-owned um, systems. Like, this the, the this this video is so dumb, so dumb that they've literally explained in detail how China has learnt from its mistakes of the past while still accusing it of uh, making the same mistake. It's it's amazing. Oh, but that oh that's crash weed. Oh, okay. Industry peasants amazing. will now have no choice but to sell to the government because okay. they control the market. Yeah, yeah, but what do you think the government is? Like, I do, I honestly don't think that people get this, right? Chinese government, the Chinese government is. The Chinese government is has popular support by the people, and it is apparently a. Uh, sorry, I'm just watching this thing. One, two. Democratically speaking, um. It's better than um, Western governments when it comes to these sort of decisions. I would even trust the American government more than I would trust a private billionaire. Honestly. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. The supply and distribution cooperative, as the major player in the industrial chain, can force peasants to grow what they want, how to grow it, and sell at a price they set. In early April, China announced the decision of the State Council of the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party on deepening comprehensive reform of supply and sales cooperatives. It reveals that supply and sales co-ops will offer a variety of services including farm machinery operations, agricultural supplies, formula fertilization, and storage and processing in a variety of ways, such as trusteeship of a large parcel of land, tilling and planting on behalf of others, shareholding cooperation, and sales-based production. This document has already planned a prototype for peasants to follow the government's instructions for production. The result is that the supply and distribution co-ops will monopolize the upstream of the food chain and the large communal canteens will monopolize the downstream, allowing yes. the CCP to take over the entire business of Chinese people's food Good. and drink. If the complete community... Why do, why do these people keep on talking about the, the Chinese government as if it's has, that it's not Chinese? It's almost like they... It's almost like this idea that the government is separate from the people which just isn't exactly the same when it, uh, it's just it's just like oh the ccp has control all right so the government has control the who controls the government the government, government is voted upon by the people and the people are pretty fucking happy with their government so like what's the problem here What's the problem? You, you, all you've got is a couple of internet competent commenters um, screeching about um, how the free market isn't available in China anymore. The, the free market is just bullshit. So is not it Created so by the CCP, the basic services and facilities for the daily life of the people is replaced by the state. Then the Chinese people will live in a surveillance system created by high technology. The launch of supply... Oh, so you mean like London? in the UK. Supply and distribution co-ops and large communal canteens will likely be followed by the implementation of a digital currency and other forms of digital controls. And now we've got the New World Order, um, friggin... I, I remember the, the, the fear of uh, digital money and all of that sort of shit. Um, like, the Chinese party seems to be pushing for um, a move away from a monetary system, it looks like, from what you've described. I don't know if that's true or not, because, like, obviously, yeah, we'll see. Um, but you need, you can't look at the Chinese government in the same way that you look at a free market Western system. It doesn't work in the same way. 
It's a controlled market. And let's face it, they, they've done better than um, the free market. Free market is pretty shit when you compare it to um, controlled, controlled markets. People seem pretty happy with them, to be honest. There we go. Instead of regulating the market with various stamps such as food and other necessities, the government could use digital forms, digital currency, digital wages, and electronic wallets, supplemented okay. by new methods such as health codes, social credit codes, and surveillance cameras, to achieve comprehensive money. All of these things, what he's describing right now is literally how we exist in the West. Like, our our social credit system is linked to the amount of uh, money that we have um, rather than China, the Chinese like social credit system which has to do with like other stuff like I'm not even going to go into that um, it's it's really not as relevant either as uh, people in the West um, like to claim if you talk to someone living in just China about the social credit score in the same way that um, people from the West um, like, seem to be terrified about it, um, they're, they're just gonna laugh in your fucking face. <laughs> Monitoring and control of the people in all aspects of their life, ranging from clothing, food, housing, and transportation, to birth, and capitalism marriage, and death. Doesn't do this in already? fact, this pattern has already emerged during the three years of epidemic control. Uh, okay, okay. Look, here are villagers relaxing and chatting in front of their homes. Uh-huh. They uh -huh. fled in a hurry upon hearing the sound of such a vehicle. Uh-huh. Curfew. Yep. Yeah. Yes, the police vehicle came to patrol. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do, you, do you know how bad COVID was in China? What the fuck is this guy doing? That, that that that's pretty normal. That seems pretty normal to me. The last time we spoke, it like air fly. Who knows? You would be the same. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. This practice by the authorities should be a way used to cope with the collapse of the Chinese economy that's happening right now. After the mean? economic collapse, in the event of a food supply crisis, Wait, China's going through a um, economic collapse. Can we can we have some have some uh, ha have source? source or any other crisis? The CCP can use the supply and distribution co-ops and large canteens and revert the original rationing system. The CCP. How is this any different to the system that we have here, where we're forced to go to work or starve? How is it any fucking different? Ah, oh, my goodness. P has clearly realized that their international environment has completely changed. U.S. blockades and restrictions, technology bans, and diplomatic pressure on the CCP are increasing by the day. The CCP's close allies are confined to Russia, Iran, North Korea, etc. All these regimes are at war or in danger of war. China's economy is in trouble, the real estate market is depressed, and the unemployment and other problems brought by the zero COVID policy are numerous. Well, yeah. So, so basically they're going through the same problems that everyone else went through um, over COVID. This is what you're saying. They're dealing with shit. They're dealing with COVID. Okay. <sighs> this is when I first came to Yiwu. I worked here before. Way high group. I worked here for almost four years. Today, I came to visit, but it closed down. I thought I could still see my former colleagues. Now you see, no one is looking after it. 
it's all overgrown. In the past, it was a well-known private enterprise, and at its peak, thousands of people were working here. But now, it's like a ghost town. No one is there. This used to be where the securities were at the front entrance. It's so run down now. Such a large company has gone out of business just like this. Yeah, yeah, private private industries aren't, are, are, being, are being discouraged in China. Like, we established that from earlier, right? Mammoth cheese. I ate some cheese. I have no idea what that did. The situation in factories that. Why has he blurred out the subtitles? Yeah, that's awesome. That's uh, that 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 is surprising to me. I wasn't expecting to hear that, but I, I, I was expecting people to, like, be terrified about it. Aha. What are you got? Full leather helmet? What? Yeah, pretty cool. But, like, why, my question is, why is, um, why are these subtitles blurred? This year is even worse than last year. Orders are fewer and fewer. Maybe it's really wintry now for workers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that China wouldn't be friends with Russia right now if it wasn't for the West. Maybe some friends think there would be a shortage of workers in factories. You could call it market socialism, but yeah, they've got socialist policies. They're encouraging, they're, they're encouraging workers' co-ops and discouraging um, free market um, enterprise. That's like really, really awesome to hear. And surprising, because, you know, like, oh wow, oh wow, there's more of them, oh no! Alright, buddy. Sorry, I'm just gonna kill this giant dude, if I can. Why can't I find a job then? The reality is really not like what you think. Last year, despite the epidemic's influence... Um, Western Reds, I mean, I mean like, um, if, if you call it communist, then I'll be like, hmm. But like, I don't know, like, it seems like they're, like, I, I don't call them, I, I don't call them socialist, I guess that often i'd call i'd call it like a controlled market basically market socialism to me is like dumb as well but it's still better than um free market capitalism yeah many factories could offer 30 rmb an hour at this time but this year many factories don't need people because there are no orders this year some factories had planned to hire 200 people but ended up hiring only 80. 460,000 factories have closed down, and many electronics factories have not received large orders from Apple this year, leading to a sharp drop in demand in the entire market. Those who want to resign should think carefully. Some companies are already laying off. I really want to know why why the why those um, subtitles are blurred. Like. I really, really would like to know, like, why, what, what the actual subtitles say. It seems a little bit sus to me. But then if they were going to lie, wouldn't they lie about something better than they're tr trying to lie about right now? They're doing a shitty job of, like, making, they, they, they basically made, through this, out this entire video, they've made China look amazing. What the fuck? Employees, conversely, like my cousin's company, she was replaced when she got back and the work worsened. She does miscellaneous chores, and the salary is lowered as well, forcing you to quit voluntarily. 
in this particular time. So basically the same as... Uh, so you're complaining about in the, the like, private industry that your sister was working, they lowered the wages and uh, forced you to quit. Like, that, that, that that's, uh, happens all the time here in the West. I don't understand why you're complaining about that. That's like a worldwide, worldwide problem, not just China. Like, that's, that's bad, but, like, it's not a Chinese problem, it's a global problem. <laughs> Things are worse here, because you can lose your job, and then lose your house, and lose everything, and not have a free canteen to get food from. <laughs> Don't quit a job easily. The slipping economy, the social unrest, the military advances, and the pending consolidation of power Again, like, this is happening globally, so why is, why is this a uh, Chinese problem? And also source, please. Power have all determined that... The sources have been interviews with people with blurred out subtitles and subtitles overlaid with uh, someone uh, reading out uh, what apparently they're saying in Chinese, but uh, I've got no way to figure out about it. Yeah, of course you complain about it, but, like, why are we watching... Why are we hearing about this in a video about how um, free food is going to uh, destroy China? What has that got to do with uh, there being free food? I, I, you're just making China look sound-based. Hey, you know, at least your sister could access free food and possibly housing as well. Um, whereas here in the West, there's no guarantees. <laughs> Today's CCP government is particularly in need of a highly controlled paramilitary management method that can keep the population's consumption and standard of living to a minimum while meeting the demand for its military to wage war. Since two years ago, the CCP has been... I, again, like, I, I would need to see the sources for, for this before, like, taking your, your word. Your sources so far have been blurred out in blurred out subtitled videos and random um, comments online, literally calling them netizens to make it sound like you found more than people complaining about China online. It's hilarious. And hoarding grain Wrong across content. the board, China snatched up half of the world's grain reserves in previous years. The okay. past two years have also seen a rather peculiar widespread shortage of electricity in China. One okay. possibility is that the CCP is ramping up the production of weaponry, including nuclear weapons, in the third tier places, thus consuming a- So, exactly- oh shit, whoops. Sorry dude. Uh oh, I stole shit. Whoopsies! Whoopsies! I'm out of here, I wanna attack you, or kill you. A lot of electricity. Now that the CCP is facing new international sanctions, a siege by the US, Japan, India and Australia in NATO in Asia, and pressure to solve the Taiwan issue, it has increased its pace of hoarding everything from food and energy to chips, and intensifying its war preparations. And all this coincides- So, like, the entire world is doing right now. Like, there's less and less warfare, yet um, the entire West is increasing is cr increasing its military um, production year by year. So, like, again, what has this got to do with China opening up fucking state-sponsored um, canteens to provide free food? People. What is this going to do with the return of the supply and distribution co-ops and the large communal canteens, they go hand in hand. Although most Chinese netizens have expressed... Like, here's what you really need to understand. When he's talking about the CCP, like, having control and, you know, controlling all the money and stuff like that, and then they turn around and use the money to redistribute uh, food and... Um, try and democratize the workplace you're not exactly <laughs> you're not exactly selling the uh the the crisis that you're trying to to me you you're you're making china look really really good and making yourself sound really really dumb press concern about the communal canteens it's likely that they haven't yet realized the seriousness of the ccp's subsequent actions and intended plan 
it appears. But like, you don't know what the intended plan is either. You you're just speculating. You've been speculating this entire time and blurring out in like subtitles so that people don't know what the people originally said. You seem very dishonest to me, and sus. The CCP's plan is proceeding well for the time being. But is it going to go well all the way, or is it possible for black swan events to happen in China and abroad? Black a black swan? swan event is something that brings catastrophic results like the collapse of a currency or a huge stock value loss. So the situation in China won't necessarily unfold according to the CCP script. What will happen? Well, it seems like they're trying to protect themselves against stock crash by trying to invest in like non-free market uh, industries. The international internet intended plan is expansion of influence. Well, I mean, that's the Western one. But can you really say that about um, non-Western, like, non-Western countries like um, China? Okay. How? And how do you separate that as a response from um, Western aggression? Like, I, I, I'm not saying that there is one or the other. not saying that there's one or the other, but, um, yeah, like, you need to be able to separate those things for me. Um, because, yeah. I mean, it's pretty obvious what the West is, um, what, why the West wants, uh, the expansion of influence, um, but it's also not as easy to say the exact same thing about countries that are, um, increasing their um, international influence as a response to that. You're answering a question with a question. Well, that's not necessarily true. That's an assumption that needs to be based up, based in, like, actual material evidence. I'm not saying you're wrong, I just want the material evidence. And not, not like, a... I, I don't really care about hype, hypotheticals, you can't prove that with a hypothetical. You have to actually give evidence of that uh, expansion of influence as a... Um, direct result of what? What matters to me is exploring this stuff. Chillwind Depths. <sighs> but in any case, I will finish this video. Happen in China remains to be seen. Um, yeah, I can say I can say that the Western Western expansion is to is as a result of capitalist um, necessity to expand and claim resources. Like it requires exponential growth growth in order to function. Now we're looking we're, we're looking at China right now, which is trying to protect itself from that kind of capitalist necessity and interest. So if you're going to say that uh, that China just wants to expand its influence. Why does it want to expand its influence? Is it trying to expand its influence? And is it being forced to expand its interests because of a result of uh, Western capitalist interference? But yes, I am going to take a quick break. Um, I need to do lady things. Um, when I get back, let's uh, talk about some gaming stuff. It'll be cool. We will have fun. So don't go anywhere, or do. Either way, though, I will be right back after this short break. And I'm back! Um, uh, with...
Okay, we'll uh, bring that up. Because, yeah, I posted this in uh, the streaming links because I was going to look through it. I just realized as well, people are putting their streaming links in the streaming links on my Discord. If you ever want me to uh, react to anything and, you, like, you find something cool, um, jump on the Discord and po post in um, su hashtag suggestions um, to... to uh, so that I can have a look at it. I usually post like links that uh, I, I've been, well, I meant, I'm meaning to post the links that I look at on stream in streaming links. So I need to fix some stuff in the Discord. If you want to be modded on the Discord, let me know. I'm always looking for help. Um, but like, yeah, it, it's don't spend too much time on that. I would. I'd love to get into a position where I can pay mods. If you want to see stuff like that, paid mods, paid um, animations, like me paying people to do stuff, why not join the Patreon? Why not subscribe, you know? Everything like that that you do makes it easier for me to do these things. In the meantime, this is what I wanted to have a talk about today, because I'm not a big fan of paywalls in media. Um, so, earlier this week, the Callisto Protocol developer Striping Distant Studios revealed all the content coming to the game Season Pass. The Season Pass features story DLC and skins, um, which are basically... Uh, pew, 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 pew. Um, have basically uh, the the standard extra content in the game in video, video game industry. So like I I think that that's pretty dumb. But I reckon doing like a five dollar supporter pack is probably a good thing if you want to just 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 to add extra stuff. I don't have a problem with that. the The problem is that the season pass. This is like DLC for day one content, right? They're going to feature a new hard mode and death animations. So locking that sort of stuff behind a paywall does seem pretty, pretty like lame to me. It's nowhere near as bad as Dead Space Two and yeah, Dead Space Three. Dead Space Two EA Games um, added so much like stuff to the get DLC to the game, like day one DLC, like exclusive uh xbox dlc exclusive playstation ex exclusive pc dlc they had that on first dead space so it's not a surprise to see it may have been under the ea games banner but the same devs that worked on dead space and added this dlc stuff yeah uh, mm. Oh shit! Oh, that's why. Hold on, because I, I keep on pressing Alt. I keep on trying to log out and and doing it. So, response being, so this is Glenn Schofield. So this is the the guy yeah. that um has um like is behind the new game that looks amazing, and I will be playing because. But fuck yeah. And it's coming out soon as well, so I don't know if I'll be playing it day at um at at release because uh, money, but yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We're not holding anything back from the main game for the season pass. We haven't even started work on this content yet. It's all new stuff that we're working on. Fans have been have asked for even more deaths, so we're making it a priority next year. It's still being locked behind a paywall, right? That still, like... <sighs> it ru still rubs me the wrong way. We haven't even started work on this content yet. Is not a good enough excuse to me for locking, like, game... base game... Uh, stuff behind a peg wall. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. Let's 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 have a look at it. Maybe, maybe it's not going to be that bad. <sighs> Sorry, I just need to uh, rank this. So let's have a look here. Let's have a look here. All right. So this is their page here. So the digital deluxe edition, right? That's what we've got here, right? The digital deluxe edition. Let's look at this. So the season pass includes outer way skin collection. So it's just an extra skin. Okay. Um story dlc like they're releasing story dlc with the game i are we like so cucked by the triple a industry game industry that we're just accepting now that they're really like, why have we stopped complaining about the fact that people are releasing unfinished games and expecting us to pay extra right so this is in australian so don't americans don't like friggin faint when you see this is australian dollars 89 dollars 95 for the day one edition right the digital deluxe edition is 30 dollars extra right what is that sorry the 90 dollars uh the 125 stupid friggin things um my brain, my brain's not working right now. It's $35. $35 extra for some extra skins. $35. For Story DLC, which has not been uh, even... They, they've admitted that they haven't even started working on this yet. This game unlocks in four days, right? Four days, right? So on November the 24th. So ten days before um, before it's uh, sorry eight days before release. Sorry, I'm just had a bout of uh, random anxiety then. Yay! General anxiety come to play. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Anxiety, wonderful. <sighs> uh, okay, so. Right, Bantrul. The venture into a previously undiscovered area of the Black Iron Prison. And so this is extra... <sighs> Gather credits to upgrade your weapons or forge new ones. So it's, 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 so, like, they're, they're, they're locking actual, like, game content behind this season past. Um, two different survival modes, basically, for $35. Extra. Twelve new enemy death animations and the engineer skin collection. Like, I have an issue with games doing this. And this isn't even like a AAA title game. This is a indie title game. I just don't think that you should be locking gameplay behind a fucking paywall and then escape we haven't even started work on this content yet it's all new stuff that we'll be working on in the new year like if anyone's followed me in my love of um of uh games such as um games such as uh Oh, yeah. Um, games such as Dyson Sphere Project, uh, such as Satisfactory, such as uh, Factorio, all of these games, right? Some of them are not released yet, they're still in alpha. Um, Factorio is fully released, but they continually update it, at the very least. They don't update it with new content, sure, but they haven't... Re they're talking about a DLC release pack right now, which is basically like Factorio 2, from what has been described described at this point. Like, we'll have to see how true that is 
they have been true to their word so far when it comes to things like sales and stuff like that. They have been very consistent with what they talk about. This is a cop-out. This is a fucking cop-out. And we're so cucked by the video game industry that we've accepted the fact that they're um, releasing unfinished games and are expecting us to pay on release for content they haven't even started working on. Story content. It's just like... The forest never had a DLC. Yeah, like... We're... S Sorry. Sorry, but uh, Sargon of Akkad is back on Twitter, and that, that just started trending, so I just got distracted for a second there. <sighs> Sensible centrism is... All right, Carl Benjamin. Pinned tweet, Sargon of Akkad. Reducing legal and, Im legal and illegal immigration... Legal and Ill illegal immigration to zero. This is centrism, apparently. Maintaining, so nationalism, 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 na restoring the death penalty, reducing the welfare, this is all uh, far-right um, policy. None of this is centrist, this is all very far-right, this is hilarious. These people are unhinged. Amazing. Incredible. But yeah, Twitter is currently like dying right now because all of the all of the worst people are being let back onto the platform in order to gain views and um like activity. But the thing is, Elon, 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 the advertiser the advertisers have left already. You're not making more money from this. You're just trying to create more um, hype and more uh, traffic to try and get more advertisers, but they've already left the platform because they don't want that kind of traffic. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, I know, right? That's awful. Yeah, this is a cop-out. But yeah, I, I, I think that, that that saying that it hasn't even been worked on yet is beside the point. The point is that you have are not you're you're releasing an unfinished game and expecting us to pay on release extra money for future content that finishes the game. Fucking disgusting. Mm. But yeah, this is um interesting thing I found. 
So how do I? So Lynette Lopez is a columnist, columnist at uh, Biz, at uh, Business Insider. So how do how do they know so much about how Elon Musk does things? They spent three years investigating Tesla at Business Insider from 18, 2018 to twenty twenty one. Here are some of the sloppy, dangerous, callous things I learned. Tesla put batteries with potentially defective uh, cooling systems in people's cars, and they knew about it. Um, Elon told his engineers to stop doing brake tests on the Model 3s. The tests were finding too many defects, and he wanted to speed up the manufacturing yeah. process. Amazing. Tesla has been much faster to do recalls in China than the US. <sighs> it shows a factor in chaos and explains why Musk was desperately behind schedule while building the Model 3. Hmm. So Tesla was generating an incredible amount of waste. The scrap at the Giga factory may have cost the company about 150 million. Holy moly! No thanks. That's insane. Oh yeah. What's that? Oh, it's a tablet. Ah. But yeah, I'm still excited to play Callisto Protocol, but uh, yeah. Oh wait. What did you have for me? I I saw the Hoser for Life pop in. Fortified culture, huh? Alright, tell me more. TEDx! So the the TED Talks, which can be, like, um, set up by anyone, basically. That's all they are. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is an amazing food. I shouldn't be eating in here. But I am. This culture is socialising our young girls to be ready for pornography, whether they ever end up on a porn site or not. And the reason for that is they are being taught to hypersexualize and pornify themselves. And really, when you think of all the thousands of images, they all come down to a young, white, blonde, toned female. Now, we do let some women of color in, if they look like Beyonce, or of course Rihanna. We have a concept called the reader inscribed in the text. Look at this woman. Look at her clothes, look at her face, look at her posture, and look at her gaze, G-A-Z-E. Who is she speaking to? Because the notion is that every image has a reader in man. Before you answer, do you think she's speaking to her mother, saying, let's go for a cup of coffee after the photo shoot? <laughs> so who's she talking to? men and what's she saying fuck me would you all agree <laughs> so this is what i call the fuck me lot now i want you to think what it means to be male and citation grow up in a culture where before you can even speak females are offering themselves to you come get me come get me now what happens to young girls is when they are developing their sexual identity, what they learn is they have two choices, either fuckability or invisibility. And what do you want from a teenager when Bill- Is she just like gonna talk about her opinions for the next seven minutes? Or, or is she gonna bring up some actual like uh, studies that went into this? 
into the DNA of adolescence is the need to be visible. What do you want? Wait, what? From Citation needed? Built into the DNA? Like, you... These people can just, like, say whatever the fuck they want, can't they? What's that? Process Her. When her friends are walking around with low slung jeans, a tramp stamp, with those midriffs showing, what do you want her to do? Because it is impossible to ask her to go for invisibility. So this is not a choice. This is being forced into a type of sex. I don't know, but like, wait. But you, it seems like you're the one that's sexualizing kids here, because like the kid doesn't necessarily thinking about sex. If I'm making, uh, if I'm taking a picture of myself, right, like a selfie or something, which is, which again is different to like a professional photo shoot, right? I, I'm, I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at myself and um, posting what I find attractive about myself, right? And you're the one who's saying that uh, people are bombarded with these images. Like, I, like, so, so there's a problem with me wanting to show the parts I love the most about myself to uh, the rest of the world? Is that a problem to show to kids? It sounds like the problem here is that you've, you're basically justifying um, the way that men objectify women by saying that it's, like, the women's fault for uh, acting like this like th that's the only thing that I can like gather from what you're talking about like this sounds a lot by like victim blaming to me sexuality that she didn't invent that she didn't decide because there are so few choices you know who really told me what it was it was actually incarcerated child rapist I like to call Dick now Dick was in prison for raping his 12 year old stepdaughter and he was explaining to me how he groomed her. And then he looked me straight in the eye and he said, the culture did a lot of the grooming for me. The culture is mass perpetrating against our girls. Perp culture part two for the boys is the porn industry. There is an entire generation of young people who wait, think what? sex- Wait, 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 wait. The porn industry is culture now? What are you talking about? Where is she going with this? Ends with a money shot to the face. Now for the uninitiated out there, a money shot is ejaculation on the face. A student told me that she was talking to a boyfriend and he said to her he had a deal breaker, that she had to let him come on her face. And she said, no, I'm not letting you do that. So get rid of the notion of playboy, penthouse, or even hustler. Those were the good old days of pornography. What changed everything was the- Well, so, so basically, instead of teaching boys that they are- Instead of over-sexualizing um, young boys, which, which is what you're doing right here, you're, you're basically making the assumption that boys want to fuck everything. Right, you're making the assumption that boys should, they should, that it's normal to um, for boys to just just f fuck things and want to fuck things. This is you're sexualizing young boys with this. You're saying that boys like just are just thinking about those things and they're bombarded with them and it's like you know it's the culture they have no choice. It's like well no you you, you they do have a choice and you need to like teach your fucking kids that. What another person wears has nothing to do with you. That's the problem with the culture. The culture is teaching women that they that they can't look too sexy, they can't look too they can't look slutty, they they, they can't not look slutty. They, they they they're they're screwed every everywhere they look. Like there is no way for them to win because they're going to be wrong no matter what. You know, if they if they if they don't um, make themselves look sexy um, for other people, um, then then they're, then they're uh, criticised for not looking sexy for other people. If they do, then they're criticised for um, doing that too. You're teaching women and girls that their appearance. That the appearance, their the appearance that they have, um, is completely dependent on other people's um, attraction to them. 
Woo! Sorry, almost dying in this game. It's hard to concentrate while well, I've... It's been too long! Alright, here we go. There we go. Oh, wait. wait. Oh, shit. How many are there? So you're teaching girls that um, the way that they look, um, that they have to care about everyone else and everyone else's opinions of them um, when trying to exist. Like, the way they look to other people is what matters most about their identity. You're teaching women that, they're, that they do not matter. What other people think of them is uh, what matters. It's disgusting. You're the one that's sexualizing kids. That's fucking disgusting. I hate it. And you're also telling boys that um, it's natural for them to just want to fuck things. And that they should be judging um, women by the way that they look. And that it's okay to do that. You're just saying that that's okay. That's And, and it's not okay for to treat girls like that. Internet. The internet made pornography affordable, it made it accessible, and it made it anonymous. Do you know that porn sites get more visitors each month than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined? Just get your head around that. And that we know I'm not surprised. that from studies that nearly 90% of the top watched rented scenes have at uh -huh. least physical or verbal abuse against the woman. I'm gonna okay. follow the breadcrumbs of a 12 year old with no credit card. Wait, whoa, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, where are you going with that? You're showing, you're telling us statistics and that now you're going to, wait, where do those studies lead? What were those studies about? What did those statistics mean? What were they trying to gain from those studies? Are, are you seriously going to just cherry pick a couple of data points and then make your own assumptions about what those data points mean without e engaging with the actual study itself? Of what, what, of course, of course they are. Of course they are. Of course, that's what they're gonna do. The statistics don't lie, you know. The, the, the statistics are, you know, they're, they're they're hard, cold, hard facts, and uh, that's supposed to distract us from the fact that she's literally just putting her own opinions onto those statistics at this point. She's just brought up those statistics that um, that uh, oh look, more people. Uh, the the most watched um, uh, porn happens to have um, verbal abuse against women in it. Um, what does that mean? And what do the researchers? Uh, what what have the researchers said about that? And what what's the point of? Uh... Um, because anything from this point, if you're going to try and extrapolate a reasoning behind that, that's just your opinion, bro. Put porn into Google, and I'm going to tell you what he's going to see. The first thing he's going to see, the major act on virtually all websites, is gagging. This is where the man puts the penis so far. Honestly, the first thing that I've uh, that I used to ever see was the the step the the step brother and stepsister step like the family shit. I don't know why that that's so popular, but Down whatever. Her throat, that she gags almost to the point of vomiting. They put a lot of mascara on her face so that she's actually tearing and you can see the rivulets of mascara running down. As mm -hmm. she is choking, he grabs her head and he pulls her towards him and he mm -hmm. says, look at me, and she is choking. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of sexual psychopath. And when you think what? that porn is the major form of sex ed, think what's going to happen to the next generation of boys. Most what? of... Okay, okay, okay. So what is that what has that got to do with the point you're trying to make? Like seriously, what what has that got to do with the point you're going to make? Like you've made up a story about a boy opening up a porn website and you're saying saying that this imaginary kid has seen a particular form of pornography without like, you know, actually backing that up with any um facts. Um, you've already used, um, like, some cherry-picked uh, data to say that, uh, oh, look at how bad porn is, but you haven't actually told us why it's bad, or if it's bad, even. 
Like, all you've done is cherry-pick data points saying that this is the most popular porn, this is how much porn is watched, and then from there you're saying porn is damaging. You need to actually bring that up, the studies, into whether it's damaging or not, but the problem is you can't do that because there is no study, really, that goes into the detrimental effects of pornography in the way that she's trying to um, claim there, there is. It's much easier just to drop, like, uh, data data points onto a uh, crowd of people than it is to actually explain what those data points mean, what the research is meant by them, and what they, like, extrapolated from that data. Because, from what she said, all the only things that I can say for sure is that a lot of people watch porn, and, a lot of pe and most of the people that watch porn are watching gagging, um... And that she thinks that boys just want to sexualize women, and that's all fine and fucking dandy by her. That's all I can say for sure. Everything else is just her, her, that her own opinions, bro. Unless she brings up a study that um, goes into what I've just spoken about. Who are brought up on hardcore mainstream internet porn? Now the hey. average twelve-year-old. I used to watch gagging. I used to find it really hot. I used to watch some really fucked up, um, the fucked up shit, um, like porn wise. I, I, I'm now like practically asexual. Like, <laughs> I, I don't look at porn. I don't think about sex. Um, does does that mean that I'm somehow destroying women? Like. None of this makes sense. You're making assumptions based on your sexualization of young boys, basically. And the expectation of girls to have to think about what other people are trying to... Uh, will uh, think about what other people will uh, judge them by. Forcing women to have to think about how they'll be judged um, if they put on, like, a mascara in a certain way. Like, seriously. It, it, it's disgusting. These people think that they're being feminist by uh, being anti-porn, when really all they're doing is getting sucked into these old conservative tropes of um, oppressing women. I'm not saying that porn is free is frees women. I'm not saying pro, 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 porn isn't um, problematic. It's problematic as fuck, but like, at the end of the day... You can't just make claims about how porn is damaging the youth without showing the material evidence of that at the same time. And no, saying that a lot of people watch porn does not prove your point. Most people are not rapists. So if most people watch porn, and most people aren't rapists, right? It seems like the correlation that you're trying to make there doesn't work. And it seems like in societies with uh, much uh, worse... Um, m what much worse uh, treatment of women tend to be much more conservative and uh, much more anti-porn. Just saying. It just doesn't seem like anything you're saying right now has any basis in reality other than cherry picking data and trying to make your own um, extrapolations from that without uh, paying attention to what the actual scientists that wrote the papers uh, that you're stealing the data points from uh, said about the issue. When he goes on to porn, when he puts porn into Google, what do you think he thinks he's going to see? Breasts? People having sex? Do you think he's thinking of gagging? Of course he's not. They're telling him, you want to be a male? This is your entree into masculinity. And in that... And this whole idea that you can make someone um, uh, treat women badly through porn doesn't make sense. It doesn't work in any other uh, portion of society. Uh, video games don't make people violent. Um, violent, uh, violent movies don't make people violent. Uh, violent people and violent, uh, 
yeah, violent people, um, sexually awful people, um, create communities and they fester and make each other worse. That that that's how things work. So like communities based around porn um, are made worse with uh, the porn being. Uh, acceptable in culture so obviously like things like child porn if that was acceptable um, online uh, to see then we would see a rise in um, assaults against children because communities would grow around those um, images and those websites like that that's how that's how culture works that's how culture works she's looking at it from a very individualistic point of view where she's making the claim that watching a violent video a violent pornographic video on YouTube uh, changes uh, the way a boy treats uh, women. Um, when really, the way the boy treats women um, is based in the society that we live in, like, and and the things we teach our kids. CP is not okay. Yeah. I know what you I know what you meant, but uh, definitely doesn't look that good. <sighs> Boy's stomach is a toxic stew. He feels enormous shame that he is around, and nobody has said to him, "This is not who you what? are," because the pornographers say to him, "This is who you are. This is what you want." Because we take your gorgeous young bitches, and we do what every man would really like to do. But you know what? what? That's not true. What are you talking and about? I know that's not true. Like she's and got the, she, she's 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 horny as fuck right friends. now. Because we believe. Holy shit! She just created a, an entire sexual experience, an entire ex like sexual experience, like for herself, based on like this imaginary boy who just watched some porn. That's kind of gross. What the fuck? more in men than the pornographers do and you know how I know that the pornographers don't tell the truth about men I know that as a feminist I know that as a scholar and above all I know that as a mother of a son my son is worth better than this if my son is then I believe your son is too let me read you wait what what did you just say then that was, that was literally, like, how do I know? Trust me, bro. That was literally that. Hold on, let's play that back. Friends, because we believe more in men than the poor man would really like to do. But you know what? That's not true. And I know that's not true. And I know that's true because feminists are men's best friends. Because we believe more in men than the pornographers do. And you know how I know? that the pornographers don't tell the truth about men. I know that as a feminist, I know that as a scholar, and above all, I know that as a mother of a son. My son is worth better than this. If my son is, then I believe your son is too. Let me- So, translation, trust me bro. My source is, I made it the fuck up. Let me read you. The kind of promotional copy from the movie Anally Ripped Whores. We at Pure Film know exactly what you want. Chicks being ass fucked till their sphincters are pink, puff. I, is she really like reading fantasy, a, a fantasy thing to, to try and like make this? She's, she's, she's really like reading. A fantasy script based on a particular type of pornography that would be like me like reading um i don't know like a book about like you know a fictional satanist cult and reading out certain lines in order to basically say oh you yeah, look look what these people actually believe like this is fiction You're, she's reading fiction right now and acting as if that's like what it actually is that's fucking... I don't even have the words. I'm totally blown out. Adult diapers just might be in store for the whores when their work is done. And I want to make this clear. This is mainstream porn. This is what the 12-year-old boy gets to within 15 seconds. We know from 40 years of research 
that the younger the boys get to porn, the more it limits their capacity for intimacy, the more it decreases their empathy for rape victims, the more it increases depression and anxiety, and the more likely they are to engage in risky... Okay. Um, source. Source. Source, please. I need, I, need, I need a fucking source for all of those things, because uh, I, no one has ever... I, I've heard that a lot. Um, oh my gosh. Alright, I just need to defeat this dude. Alright, this guy's dead. Now this one. And you did. Ah, got him. Defeated. Yeah. Let's go back through that. I really want to hear that again. We know from 40 years of research that the younger the boys get to porn, the more it limits their capacity for intimacy, the more it increases their empathy for rape the more it increases depression and anxiety, and the more likely they are to engage in risky sexual behaviour. I, I, we I, have I... a whole generation of boys desensitised, because really... Like she has, she doesn't even have um, a uh, source on the screen. She's just basically saying her opinions. Like, what's the research? Who is this person? <laughs> oh look, a red link. Ah. <sighs> Rad femme. She's a turf. Okay, 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 I'm gonna read this one out. In February 2011, Do uh, Dines was invited with fellow anti-pornography activist Shelley Leuven to debate Anna Spann, a pornographic film director at the Cambridge Unid Union, when it proposed the notion, um, this house believes that pornography does a good public service. Primarily among those who morally disapprove of it. So the judge suggests the use of pornography by those in monogamous relationships is not necessarily associated with negative consequences. It seems the negative consequences of pornography use depend on the consumer's own moral beliefs about the pra practice. Yep. 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 No, that makes perfect sense. Yep. I mean that's just that's just an article talking about one uh, paper, but still, it makes a lot of sense. All right. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, Dines did not sway the House, which voted 231 in favour to 187 against, with 197 abstentions. Dines. <laughs> 
Dine said her opponents won because the chamber consisted mostly of, quote, 18 to 22 year old males who are using pornography on a regular basis. Aww. That's amazing. That's amazing. That, the cope, the cope, oh. And I don't want you to believe the lie anymore, anymore because I care about you as a public, I care about your kids, I care about your families. I actually kind of want to watch this. I'm going to watch this tomorrow. This one sounds interesting to me. Yeah. Um... It'll be great. We go have some fun tomorrow. Really, what you want at 10 is different to what you want at 15, 20, 30. So where's this going? In 2002, the Free Speech Coalition, which is the lobbying arm of the porn industry, lobbied the Ashcroft Court to take away the argument that you couldn't use girls who looked under 18. And this is what we got overnight. Teen porn. First time with daddy. Daddy's whore. It's okay, she's my stepdaughter. Hey, you know what? C broken clock is right twice a day. I think that that's fucking gross. And uh, anyone who uh, is into that kind of thing is fucking disgusting. And they, they are bad, and you should you are bad, and you should feel bad for wanting to look at, like, un underage girls. No! What are we going to do? How are we going to tie this porn monster down step by step? We're going to use the Gulliver strategy. Education by education by education. Okay, well, look, can you start by being good at educating people on actual facts instead of, like, cherry-picking statistics and being really shit at what you do? Maybe? Maybe? We're going Be to better. use a public health approach. Just like we stop drinking and driving, you bring to the table all those who have a vested interest in the well-being of the next generation. And at my group, Culture Reframed, we are taking the public health model and we are going to build parents' programs, we are going to build programs for professionals, we are going to build programs for students, because we are going to tie this porn monster down piece by piece. And you know why? Because our children are worth more. Our culture is worth more, our boys are worth more, and our girls are worth more. Thank you very much. I'd like to remind you all that she's a turf. So, take take what she uh, take take what she says about caring about her kid about the kids uh, very, very skeptically, um, because yeah, like a, ter a rad, rad femme turf like her is going to uh, be against. Um, Proper healthcare for children. Ooh, forgot about this area. This culture. Oh no! I don't want to return to that. Oh, what a gross person. Anti-white. Anti-white school. Good evening, and boy, do we have a special episode. Oh my gosh, the fake, the the fake peep, the fake ship. Hold on, I want to get some more. Um... No, actually, no. Next, let's do it. So for you today. Because if you've been following the news, or if you happen to have any kids in school, well, then you're likely well aware that a certain trend of ideology has been creeping its way into our nation's education system. For a while, it was under the surface, but lately, at least in the last several years, it's become more and more overt with more obvious surface-level manifestations. These are things like a kindergarten over in Washington, D.C. having their kids march around the school with BLM signs, a school district over in Seattle claiming that math is actually racist, you have school districts taking kids on field trips to drag shows, and, of course, you have more and more curriculum teaching history from a, you can say, revisionist lens. What? So, in order to understand how the shift actually... No, no, you can't. You can't say revisionist lens. Critical race theory is looking at history through a historical lens, through an evidence-based um, lens. To claim that critical race theory is a historical is to be like that. How can I get into the secluded hideaway? I want to get into the secluded hideaway. Why not? Hold on a second. Chill wind. 
the depths secluded hideaway. How do I get into there? Where is... Where, how do I get into it? Oh, that guy's got an interesting HUD. Where do I find? How do I get into the um, secluded highway? How do I though? Is it part of a quest or something? Okay, nothing to do with that quest. But how do I get in? Ah! I'm sorry. I'm just really frustrated. I want to get in! Dark clouds. Okay, it's part of the quest. I don't need to worry about it until I get the quest. Cool. Let's go back to whatever we were looking at. ...actually took place, who funded it, and what it will ultimately lead to if it doesn't change. Well, I took the opportunity to sit down and speak with Mr. Luke Rosaic. He's an investigative reporter with The Daily Wire, and he's also the author <laughs> of a great new book called The Race to the Bottom. And so, strap okay. yourselves in, smash that like button, and take a listen. Luke, All thank right. you so much for joining us. Uh, maybe to start with, can you please introduce yourself and maybe what initially motivated you to get involved in researching CRT? Sure, I'm an investigative reporter at the Daily Wire, and back in 2019, which I, I, I don't think that they have reporters at the Daily Wire. I'm going to be honest. Seems like ages ago in the context of schools, I noticed that there was ten Democrats on my local school board and none of them had kids in the school system. And I was just so kind of shocked by that. I mean, not a single one of them had kids. What are they doing on the school board? And it turns out that they were all there for their own weird political pet causes, which were oftentimes very radical, and not only had <laughs> nothing to do with education, but oftentimes Source? came at the expense of Trust rigorous me, academics. And at that time, you know, I had focused all my career on writing about the federal government and I was involved in all these big stories that I thought were very, you know, important because they're at the national level and no one was talking about the school board. It sounded like, um, 
you know, small time stuff that no one cared about. But I realized that precisely because so few people were paying attention, it had created this vacuum into which um, these highly mobilized and kind of obsessed and extremely radical activists had filled that void and they were the only ones going to the school board meetings and organizing the teacher trainings and things like that. Um, and, you know, shortly after that, I worked on a story out of Seattle where there was a lady who was in charge of the equity programs there and she was telling black kids in Seattle that math is racist, math isn't for them. Oh, for fuck's sake, no, that's so bullshit. The whole math is racist thing is like talking about the the discrepancies within um, scores and questioning why that is and trying to come up with solutions. But to, to conservatives, pointing out that they have a spider on their face is the same as apparently you putting it there in the first place. And I was just so saddened and struck by that because Seattle is where Amazon and Microsoft are headquartered. And you hear about the, um, what? you know, the, the employment rates, unemployment rates, poverty rates of blacks. And then you think Bit of a, uh, self -report about there. how there are high tech companies. They very much want to find qualified people and pay them huge salaries in Seattle. And all they have to do is be good at math. And here we have these extreme radical activists who are actually telling kids math isn't for you and lies just lies this guy's a thumb that has no brain holy shit and so i started realizing before anyone was focusing on schools before anyone knew what critical race theory was that something had gone very wrong in the school systems and it had the potential to really derail our entire country because these kids are going to be wait does this guy have kids Who is this guy again? Hold on, this is a 329. Well, I took the opportunity to sit down and speak with Mr. Luke Rosaic. He's a. I don't know how to pronounce his name, sorry. Crypto Cope Conspiracy? Here we go, Luke. Can we not? Okay, so he doesn't have kids, as far as I know. Okay. They're going to be adults in just a few years and part of the oh, workforce so and, and part of the voting base and things Morning. like that. So having looked into it, what did you find? What were the roots of, of this kind of CRT critical race theory curriculum? The roots of it are these completely oh garbage academic papers in the early 1990s by a bunch of black feminists. And it's the kind of papers that they're total nonsense like if you it's like the kind of thing that an eighth grader would write and turn in um and Sauce? Oh, what the fuck people say oh you know especially in the left they like to say oh you just don't understand critical race theory uh i worked on this book race to the bottom for well over a year i read all the papers i do understand them there, it's just. It doesn't seem like you do, though, because you can't even describe them. Like, you can't even describe them right now. Oh, this guy is so cringe. Kind of shockingly inane what they say. It's just a hammer that goes around looking for nails. And basically, by exercising critical race theory, you can just look at any situation 
and try to find the racism that's supposedly hidden somewhere in there. That's the point, is to try and look at how, like, race intersects with other things. That's the point. You just described, really simply, it, the problem. And that's only a problem if you're wanting to hide the racism in plain view. Which, I guess, they want, I suppose. They just... And it doesn't propose any solutions, it just says everything is racist. That's not true either. Like, what are you talking about? This is just lies at this point. Just lies. More. Um, it also redefines <sighs> whiteness as anything that's dominant. So it's really just a way to overthrow society because anything can be dominant. Anything that works, they say the scientific method is dominant. And so it has to be dismantled. Asians are actually white. What? Wait. <laughs> Being... Wait, whiteness is just dominant. You... He just tried to convince us that he understand, understood critical race theory, but he doesn't even understand, like, how whiteness is um, understood under critical race theory. To make it, putting in two kids to do their bidding by making crypto look bad. I don't believe in regulations fundamentally, yeah. L legal aid, le the <laughs> age of consent, what? Right, because they do well in math and they're dominant there, um, so they have to be kind of taken out of these magnet school and these rig No! That's not what critical race theory studies at all. This is just complete and utter lies. Holy fuck. Like, this, this section also of the video is labelled as what were the roots of CRT, and he hasn't mentioned one of the founders of the idea. Hasn't spoken about how CRT is a, um, it has absolutely nothing to do with Marxism. Um, it is a, well, in the way, in, in a way that, it's similar to Marxism in the way that both, both, um, theories, uh, seek to use, um, material analysis in order to come to their conclusions. So, like, everything that, um, fu fundamentalist, um, uh, idiots, um, hey, you know. Alright, little poop. Um, yeah, oh my gosh, this guy's programmed. So that's frustrating. What I was really interested to kind of cr discover and chronicle in this book is how it went into the schools in the 1990s. Um, really single-handedly by this one guy named Glenn Singleton who made a ton of money uh, as a consultant prop taking these academic theories and just printing out stupid little workbooks and like holding teacher trainings based on them. And he was actually a guy, he's a black guy, but he went to a Jewish day school where he was head of the horseback riding club and he loved show tunes. Like there was nothing about this guy that was like from the streets. He went to an Ivy League college, worked on Madison Avenue, lived in Beverly Hills. This guy lived a charmed life. And when he reached adult years, he had this chip on his shoulder. Like He literally said, what if I, Glenn Singleton, am not black enough? And so he decided to take out his weird... What the fuck? What the fuck? This white guy talking about, about a black guy not being black enough. What the fuck? Holy shit, what a racist piece of shit. He doesn't even realize how racist he is, and he wrote, tried to write a book about critical race theory. That's fucking hilarious. ...identity crisis on millions of children by telling them, well, if you really want to be black, part of our culture is School we don't really rules, care about money. reading and writing, we don't no, show right. up on time, yeah, yeah. we don't listen to rules. And it was just, like, absurd stuff that if you have, you know, none of your black friends would have ever said anything like this. Like, no, really no one in the, in the, even in the inner cities is talking like this. It's just like one weird guy working on his identity crisis. And the schools are just inviting him in and paying money and even laying off teachers to avoid this, to, to, to put this weird training onto their staff. And, uh, and so basically one of the other things that I found is that in the early two, in the early two thousands, um, there was no child left behind, which was an academic policy that basically started publishing graduation rates and test scores online. And at that point, the school administrators really wanted to rig the stats. They didn't want you to see like these poor graduation rates. 
And so they started lowering standards. And so in early 2001, as an, a sort of ironic and unexpected reaction to this pretty nonpartisan transparency policy, what you saw is what I call a race to the bottom, where they started using racial rhetoric as an excuse to stop doing testing, to make it easier to graduate, so that basically more kids graduate and the, the spreadsheets look better, but it's not because any, anyone is smarter. They've just made it easier to graduate. And so at the end of the day, what I found in this book is that for all the... Holy shit, none of what this guy just said is true in any possible way. The problems with the No Child Left Behind policy was were that they, they um, attached monetary um, considerations to... Uh, monetary um, considerations to um, like um, school um, success rates, like incentivizing these sorts of practices. Games don't cause. Could you argue that message of the game um, normalizes violence? Um, no, like when it comes to violent games, where it's the communities that they create that are violent, not the games. Like the games don't make people more violent. That's the point. Um, you can have violent games which have toxic cultures around them, like, um, I don't know, um, what was it, there was a really, uh, there was, what was it called, Kingdom Come Deliverance had a really toxic community around it, you know, you have certain communities that, um, do, like, that, that just toxic people collect around, but the games themselves don't cause people to be more or less violent, they just depends on the people that collect around them it's like um you know like games don't make it didn't pay, didn't make uh, gamergate happen right the, co the community that uh, spawned around gamergate was the toxic environment that was the cause of all the problems people don't tend to work like that what the hell i friggin died somehow Damn it! I want to get, I want to get the experience points. Experience, give me the experience. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm there. I am. All right, cool. I, I hit him. All right, cool. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying not to die while also get getting points. Kill. Wait. Oh, there we go. Phew. Good stuff. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. But yeah. Um, That's where crazy I stand on that. politics stuff we see the you know critical race theory the equity transgender at the root of it like like at the the, the whole Arabs equals admin enemies normalization in media um, when it comes to like um, uh, video games like Call of Duty and that um, that is a reflection of society not the way the other way around people put those things in games because it's acceptable in society to uh, act like that that it doesn't it doesn't work the other way around there is absolutely zero i'm serious about this there's zero evidence that um that works that way around uh, there's no ev ev evidence that media influences culture in the sense that having uh, the bad guys be um arab um people um, makes people um, more likely to be hate hateful towards Arab uh, communities. What does influence people is allowing hate groups to exist. Hate groups like, like this, I guess. Like people, pe people like criticizing. Whoa, what's a Harry fiend? Hello, buddy. The pro Bolsonaro where you fought trans people and minorities would lead to more discrimination. Well, yes. Well, like, I agree with that. But playing the game isn't what matters. The point of that game is to create community messaging around. Like, those, uh, those hateful communities are bolstered by those games. 
the reflections of it. Like, if I got my mum to play a side scroller game where you fought trans people and minorities, she wouldn't become racist. You know? Like, she wouldn't become a. a my mum wouldn't become a racist person because that's not who she is. That's not what she believes in. That's not what she's uh, grown up around. That's not sure how she raised me. But if I if I gave that game to a community that already hates trans people and they laugh and make fun and uh, enjoy themselves um, and create communities around hating trans people, yeah, that will contribute to violence against trans people. We need to understand which way around these things work because it isn't like an individualistic way. It is it is groups come together, form communities, and grow. Like, this is, like, what we should be doing as leftists, really, is creating more communities and growing that way, because that's that's how, you know, human beings work. Hey, this guy's annoying again. <sighs> Solve the puzzle. What is the puzzle, then? All right, there's a puzzle. We're, we're gonna light a puzzle. Mm, incorrect, it seems. Mountain flowers. Perhaps there's an order there. Like pro propaganda signals to um is something that we that signals to other people rather than than um like. Brainwashing isn't a real thing. Alright, alright. How about this one? Nope. Sorry, I'm just trying to solve this damn puzzle. Oh, nice. Alright. Nope. What riddle? I'm doing this trial and error, baby. Is there a riddle? I'm supposed to be reading a riddle. Lol. Trial and error will see me through. Oh, apparently that did it. Alright, cool. I did a thing! It is the fact that our schools are not teaching our kids reading, writing, math, science, and they're just using these radical politics as a way to hide that objective data, because at the root of it, critical race theory explicitly rejects objectivity. All right, the sponsor of today's episode is a phenomenal company called You know, I remember, so you mentioned the 1990s. When, when I was in, I think, either third or fourth grade, I remember one day we had a substitute teacher come in, and she told us, she, I forgot the, the, the main thrust of the lesson, but among in the lesson, she told us that black people can't be racist because the society is set up in a way that they don't have the power, and therefore they yeah. can't be racist just by definition yeah. because the definition of racism is you need to... Yeah, yeah. They, they're describing systemic racism. Um, like you can be, you can be racist individual, I guess, but I don't, I, like, it fucking doesn't matter. Like, be, be, like, it doesn't fucking matter because like, if you're going to say something racist to me as a white, as a white person and like insult me for being white, um, I, it doesn't, it, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, it sucks that it doesn't matter, maybe it should, but like, it's not going to cause me, um, it's not like a microaggression in the same way that it would be for, an, for another minority. Like, you, you could attack me for being transgender, and I suppose that would be, uh, that would make sense, but like, what is being racist towards me as a white person going to, uh, do to me as a white person? Nothing compared to allowing hate speech to perpetuate around minorities who do actually get affected when the society is allowed to do that and communities can grow around hate hating those groups 
because of the power dynamic, racism only matters when it when it comes to um, like being racist against more minorities. Like it doesn't really it doesn't affect white people in the same way it affects other people. White people is an in group, and these people don't understand what that means. Um, like literally, literally, this guy, this guy Luke, uh, fucking thinks that um, because we talk about uh, power dynamics and power structures and and that sort of thing, we think that like people who are good at maths are a dominant power structure, and that's why we need to stop white people from doing maths. Like literally, that's that that's what that's what he got out of it, and it's fucking hilarious, but also just so depressing when these people are allowed to spread absolute idiocy to a wider audience like this is why it's a problem like to allow this sort of like dumbassery is because it creates communities around it you need to have power in order you know to, to qualify as being racist <laughs> and the reason i remember that episode is because even though i think i was in the third grade and i must have been like eight or nine years old i remember thinking like like that can't be true. Like that. Like you can redefine the words, but like you know. Like I'm. I'm. I just remember sitting there in class thinking like that. That doesn't make any sense, right? That, like that, that doesn't make this objective sense. It didn't make sense because you didn't understand how whiteness works as a power as a power dynamic. And that's okay. You don't have to understand those things. But don't argue with the experts in their fil fields about this sort of stuff because you're just not going to win out against that. Ah. <sighs> So dumb. So dumb. 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 Here's the thing. If I upgrade uh, metalworking, by the way, then oh, and my blacksmithing skill um, on this character, then that means that I get more and more like higher level items from them. <laughs> but yeah, dumb. How how did it come to be that from this man from Glenn uh, Singleton that you mentioned? How did it come to be that other teachers began to teach this curriculum? Was he holding courses like, and for instance, that substitute teacher of mine likely went to that course, or what, were they teaching it in the teaching schools, and then and then they went off to you know teach at individual school districts? How did that actually play out? Yeah, you know, he has this train-the-trainer model, so it's basically a pyramid scheme where you get their roots, you know, you get your tentacles into a school district and you embed it so that all, then after you leave, the, so there's some head teacher that's teaching all the other teachers out of this workbook. Um, but yeah, I, I love your anecdote because people really do think, oh, in, you know, 2019, there was George Floyd and Black Lives Matter, and we started hearing about racism all the time, so it makes sense that it also went into the schools at that time. And that's not what happened. What happened was, because schools... This person's lack of understanding or basic knowledge of CRT is why we need to teach it in schools. This is like the last video. Like they're, they're they're debunking their own points by being such fucking idiots. This is this is what people listen. This is who the, who the conservatives listen to. Like this is the person writing articles that your un racist uncle at Thanksgiving reads and believes. Okay, like let's just like stop the laughter for a second. Yes, ha ha ha. This person is dumb as fuck. But at the end of the day, they have a stronger hold over your racist uncle's understanding of critical race theory than you do. Let that sink in. Oh, fucking hell, Musk, you fucking ruined that. ...were closed because of coronavirus and the teachers' union refusing to go to work, parents just got a glimpse of what had been in schools for many years. And so it's really the tail wagging the dog here. Have, I mean, I think it's the, the schools have, like, some back, some, in places some like Minneapolis denial. not teaching the kids math, but yeah. affirmatively teaching that they are oppressed, that you then had these young people... Nobody's not teaching math. That's a lie. That's just a lie. Like, you, you don't understand what that whole thing was. That, that Do you know what that whole thing blew up from? A, a, a uh, newspaper article uh, talking, uh, taking the most reactionary uh, response to um, talking about a study that came out um, into how uh, race dynamics intersect with um, 
mathematical results and how we need to work towards improving those things. That's it. But the title probably said, like, maths is racist or something like that. And people... I need you to understand this. People understand what an article says based on the title. Like, the vast majority of people are not literate past the title of a newspaper article. Like, they are unable to actually understand what the article means beyond the summary of the title. It's terrifying to think in those terms, but that's the truth. And these are the people who are swaying opinions and creating communities around this shit. Setting fire to their own cities. And the truth of the matter is if you want income inequality and things like that, if you want rather, if you want to, you know, improve um, economic outcomes for, for people in general and also for specific races, the best way to do that... Oh, the best way to do that is through a uh, planned economy? That is to help them um, learn math and science and reading and writing and they will go on to be highly successful people. And that's the one thing that the school districts are not doing. Um, the other way that it really embedded across, you know, so 13,000 school districts beyond just this one guy, Glenn Singleton, is the philanthropic foundations like Gates Foundation, Ford Foundation, MacArthur Foundation, Carnegie Foundation, oh, Rockefeller Foundation. Um, if you think back to... Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Is he going to say, is he going to say Jewish people? Is he going to bring up Jewish people? What do you reckon? Quick poll in chat. X. Press press X if you think he's going to bring up Jewish people. The last time that people really actually paid attention to schools, which is kind of a crazy thing, right? Because they play such a big role in our lives and we spend a trillion dollars a year on them. It was probably Common Core, that whole debate around 2008. And it was kind of widely documented at that time that the Gates Foundation was single-handedly responsible for it. Um, and so fast forward... Uh, you know, 15 years, and what mm -hmm. you see is the same philanthropic foundations are the ones embedding critical race theory, not only in schools, but also in society at large. Um, and so, you know, you hear about things like Soros and things like that on the right. You rarely hear about... <laughs> Does that count? I think that fucking counts. I'm going to count it. Carnegie, Rockefeller, Ford... In my view, those are the most radical and um, powerful political entities in the country. And the I don't understand what this guy has against Ford, to be honest. I think he'd be on board with Ford. The fact that they're operating under the radar only makes them more effective. What is the goal of these foundations? Do, is this the worldview that they subscribe to, they believe in it, and they therefore think kids should be taught this? Or do they have some kind of end goal in mind and that's why they're teaching it? Or is it kind of both? You know, if you look at the philanthropic foundations, these are people that these foundations started in the early 1900s with the wealth of these, um, you know, monopolists like uh, Carnegie, right? And Kellogg, the break, you know, the brothers behind the breakfast cereals, and they made a ton of money. And, um, and they were capitalists, person. certainly, but they were also, to be frank, they were racists and they were creeps. And the philanthropic foundation. Yeah, most people back then were uh, racist and creeps, and, uh, like, still are, like, uh, point, point, and example. ...like the Ford Foundation and Rockefeller, Carnegie, they were created to do eugenics. They were created to, it was basically this liberal view that we're elite and we're smart and we're going to use social science to improve society, but from the beginning, the way they wanted to improve society was to get rid of minorities and to target blacks um, and to sterilize Hispanic women. Um, okay. And so at one point in the 1940s, 
the philanthropic foundations had a, a five acre compound on Long Island that was just a warehouse of the genetics of all American families. And they were using that to see, well, which people are desirable, which have desirable genetics and which should not be procreating. So I think it's this, it's, it's racist. The foundations have arguably been racist for 150 years. And this, the critical race theory they're doing now is the same kind of racism that they were doing in 1910. Um, but another way to look at it is that there is a compulsion among the liberal elites to engineer everything and to try, and they, and they kind of think they're making the world a better place. But the problem is when you try to play God and manipulate everything, y you really can't. And it oftentimes leads to these, um, unintended consequences. And, what? you know, whether we can't really know what their intentions are now, if they really want to help minorities now. But the result of it, I think, is the same as it is before. You're telling minorities that they, math isn't for them, and you're, you're, you're putting them... Yeah, I mean, like, that's not even true. So, like, he keeps on saying that, um, that critical race theory is telling uh, black people that they can't do math, and that's not the case. It's basically saying, hey, shit, oh, there's a spider in the room. And then, like, conservatives turning around and said, why did you put a spider in the room? Like, that's it. That that that's what this is. It's it it's talking about something that already exists, as if it's something that's and then blaming the person for pointing out that it exists. Is the emperor new, emperor's new clothes? If 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 everyone blamed the kid and stoned him to death after telling him that the that the king's not wearing any clothes, they would stone the kid instead of like actually realizing, oh shit, the, the emperor's not wearing clothes. It's the ABC gangsters and black. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother! <laughs> ...into poverty. Um, so it is, it's a creepy um, uh, sort of God complex. And, and, that and, and I love that, I love that the people like this are so dumb they don't even realize that they're projecting. And like, it's, it's just like, just, just, just the way he says black people. Like, that's all you really need to hear from this guy. Well, I know, I know what you are. I know what you are, Luke. I know what you are. These philanthropic foundations have. Well, in your view, if this continues down the road that it's going down, if it's not stopped or, or altered in any way, what will happen to society, let's say, 10, 20 years from now? Oh, they'll when replace the, us. When the That's kids what's going to school, happen. They're, uh, they're all going to replace us with the uh, critical race theory into, teachers. You know, the levers of society. That... You know, I think if we don't address the school issue in the short term, what we're looking at is civilization will collapse. You know, when you look at bus. the federal data on the academic proficiency of 12th graders who of course are basically adults they're going to be working potentially the next seventeen year olds aren't adults dude 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 the self report self report jail jail for this man yep jail for this man next holy year fuck voting and that's the the right are just all fucking groomers very same year um only a third of them can read. And we're talking about 12th graders. 24% are proficient in um, in math. The figures are... And, but you're not literate enough to understand c critical race theory. You wrote an entire book and you didn't even understand what uh, you were writing about. Like, you're, you're part of the problem, man. You're absolutely... Are you going to blame, like, critical race theory for the fact that you don't understand what critical race theory is? Is that what you're going to do right now? Is that is that it? <laughs> even worse in american history and science and so we just can't have you know how are we going to compete with china that way how are we going to compete with russia that way how are we going to develop technology that makes life better for poor people um, oh communism and then I of know course the there is the, the voting thing too where you know basically yeah these are these are fellow citizens, and they don't have the ability to even make rational decisions because they've been uh, rendered so, uh, you know, sort of incapable of thinking by these by these school systems. What? And so I think we're going to see a very... No, that's the opposite. It's the, like, well, I mean, like, yes, it, it's, 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 you don't understand it, but you're Canadian, but it explains it. Basically, this guy is blaming critical theory, race theory for not him not being un, able to understand what critical race theory is. That's what I'm hearing from this, which, you know, like, weird flex, but okay. 
I mean, like, I don't think... I feel like this guy didn't go to college to study law, so I'm not sure why he's talking about, like, something that's studied in university, at a university level. But, uh, sure, cool, whatever, man. Yeah, um... Uh, bifurcated society where very much like the 1910s when these philanthropic foundations existed because there was this you know billionaire collusion you know monopolist society and like you know great Gatsby style like a bunch of peasants and then a bunch of rich people that's probably what we're gonna see in the future because there's gonna be a huge impoverished cl uh, class of people uh, and you know for for the liberals to be saying so communism right communism is the answer right you you're, that's that's what he's ramping up to he's, he's going to talk about communism in a sec i know it you know schools are underfunded blah 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 the liberals have been in charge of the schools for many years and they're the ones about? presiding what are you what are you fucking talking about citation needed like what the liberals don't do fucking anything when they get into power and then the republicans make things worse like it's a ratchet based system so like even if the liberals have been in, been in charge of the schools it's not like anything would friggin change over these massive racial inequalities but over but even worse than that man i don't know man sounds like you're trying to um trying to like uh, impose some uh, critical race theory on me here Sounds like you're going to tell me that I'm not good at math because I'm transgender or something. Just in general, these abysmal academic um, levels of, of proficiency. So we're not talking about a problem that's limited to kids here. This is in quite the short term going to be a problem for all of us. And by the way, even if you withdraw your own kids from public school and put them into private school or homeschooling, they're going to still have to live in the world as adults um, that's populated largely by public school graduates. No, that was not the full interview because of the regime of censorship here on YouTube. I, I, I cannot believe that there was more to that interview. Interview Like, that was just fucking brain dead. Brain dead. What are we up to? We've got half an hour to go. This one's going to be a long one. I'm going to, like, uh, save it for tomorrow, I think. This one was funny. We should go after teachers. Yeah, yeah. Go after the poor people who are controlling everything somehow. Um, what? Hot babe. Whoa, whoa. This is like thirty-nine minutes. Exposes a oh, fucking Tim Pool. Come on. There's been more and more news about the COVID Omicron variant or as Joe Biden likes to call it, the Omicron variant. And a lot of people are worried. We're hearing from Fauci. He's saying, you know, we don't think it'll be that bad, but prepare for the worst. He's still talking about I've Fauci, got videos seriously. of this. We'll jump to it. In the end, she says that she was told by the CDC, in a, uh, the CDC that she was being punished for lying to the police. Now, a lot of people said there's no Australian CDC. Australian CDC, okay. What is he talking about? What is this? Does he does he put um um No he doesn't he doesn't even put like links in his description. What the fuck? What is he looking at? Unheard news. Anyway, fuck Tim Paul. Twenty twenty one. Ah, oh, it's ages ago. A little background. Couldn't verify some facts, but they. Pre I can't tell if they're smiling. They're all wearing masks. Maybe they are. This is manipulation and propaganda, because we actually have this story right now. Now the story is from unheard.
Found it. It's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Like you, you are so small. You, they just overpower you, and you're literally nothing. It's like you do what we say, or you're in trouble. We'll lock you up for longer. Yeah, they were even threatening me that if I was to do this again, we will extend your time in here. Okay. Hello and welcome to Unheard. I'm Freddie Sayers. Australia. Until recently, that country was most famous for its sunshine and relaxed attitude. Well, since the COVID pandemic hit, we've all got to know another side of Australia, with some of the longest and most stringent lockdowns and travel restrictions in the world. It's become a case study of what. Yeah, okay, and it worked great. We're doing really well here in Australia now <laughs> because of the lockdowns and mandates. What? You thought that the mandates were a bad thing? ...happens when a government will do anything to keep COVID numbers low. Their latest mm -hmm. policy is to build special camps, COVID internment camps, to which infected and suspected infected people are moved. The biggest of these camps is called Howard... Well, yeah, because, like, our, the, the hotel system, like, was being... Our hotels and our hospitals were being overrun. Like, we needed to build, like, short-term, like, camps, basically, to put people in, in order to, ah, bullshit, go away. Um, because we had nowhere to house people. Whoa. Mandates. Springs. It houses up to 2,000 inmates, surrounded by tall fences and carefully policed against attempts yeah. to escape. Yeah, it's been yeah, yeah, same thing in the host in the hotels. They had uh, security guards in the hotels um, when people were um, in isolation, and yeah, that was a that was a good decision to make. It worked, so yeah, cool. Described as the gold standard of such camps, and is being replicated across Australia. Joining us today on the line from Darwin. I'm sure that most of them didn't end up getting used at the end of the, the day. In the Northern though. Territories is Hayley Hodgson. She has just returned from a 14 day, let's say, stay at Howard Springs. And yeah. she's agreed to tell us all about it. Oh no, two weeks in isolation. Like, fucking hell. What a fucking, what a fucking was. Hi, Hayley. Jeez. Hi, how are you going? So we are really. I would love to ask Haley about what she thinks about um, the refugee camps in, um, like, uh, Nauru and uh, other places, Christmas Island. What she thinks about that? Really keen to just hear what's happened to you. It sounds like you've had quite an interesting last couple of weeks. Mm, Take us right back to the beginning. How did this all start? Okay, so how it all started was um, a friend of mine went to work and got tested for COVID. He had a little bit of a cold. He tested positive. Okay. He got put into this quarantine camp. Um, and then mm -hmm. we went about our days as normal. And then the investigators. Wait, Wait you, you didn't get tested for COVID yourself. Your housemate got COVID and you didn't get tested. Okay. Step one, you're an idiot. Starting to knock on our doors and stuff like that. Um, so then what actually happened was I had investigators come. Yeah. I walked out the front of Just, just to interrupt you. So how did they investigate you? Were, were, were you part of a contact tracing kind of list? Or? So or I, you, your housemates, your address. What they did is how they contacted me was I have a scooter and they ran my number plate and they ran mm -hmm. the number plate and seen the footage that I was with the person who had tested positive and that's how that's awesome. they knocked on my door and knew where I lived from running my number plates. Okay. So then do they call you up or did they come straight to the house or what happens next? Yeah, so they came straight to my house. I didn't get a call or anything. I literally walked out the front and it was two undercover investigators. 
-hmm. And they said, oh, do you know so-and-so? I said, yes. They said, have you been with them? I said, yep. I told them my whereabouts, where I'd been, everything like that. And they said, no worries. And they said, had you had a COVID test done? I said, yes, I had when I had it, just because I was so scared of in the moment. So she lied to the investigators about it. Okay, Paul. And I've been to one of these quarantine camps before. Uh, my, 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 my level of empathy for this woman is like sinking lower than I thought possible. Holy shit. Or hell. only literally a month before this. So I know what it was like. I was just really scared. It was just a horrible position to be in. And I just I just lied and said, look, yeah, I have when I had. They said, they, you know, they, they drove off. About five minutes later, they called me and they said, we've tried to check the system and your name's nowhere. We can't find you. And I said, look, I've lied to you. I'm completely sorry. I, I'm so apologetic. You know, I'm I'm scared. I don't want to, you know, this is just such a scary thing. Um, and they said, yep, righto, stay there. Someone's going to come and test you. Mm -hmm. I said, all right. So I stayed there and I just waited for someone to come and test me. No one came to test me. The next people who rocked up at my house were two other police officers. They mm -hmm. blocked my so driveway. These are, these are actually uniformed police officers, normal yep. police officers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then the police officers blocked my driveway. I walked out and I said, what's going on? Are you guys testing me for COVID? What's happening? They said, no, you're getting taken away and you have no choice. You're going to Howard Springs. Um, you either bullshit. come with us now. Bullshit. I call bullshit on this story. She's already fucking lying. Um, and we'll put you in the back of the Divi van. So, or you can have a choice to get a COVID cab. So, of course, I chose the COVID cab because I said, well, if we're to take you, we're going to um, hand you a $5,000 fine. So, of course, I didn't want that to happen. So I just said, look, I don't consent to this. I don't I don't understand why I can't just self-isolate at home like a lot of other people are doing. Well, because you um, lied. And they just said, we've just been told from higher up where to take yep. you and that's all that there is yeah you lied. So howard springs is you, you lied and you're lying now it's kind of fucking obvious like i you just like oh you know, i was just so scared i was just so scared i do not consent blah blah yeah you're one of those fuck you're one of those i know what you are holy fuck okay it's the biggest covid camp in australia isn't it it's Correct. a huge yeah. network of cabins yeah. that is built Ooh. to house it's better than what we give to refugees people. i'll tell you that yeah so they are literally bringing in now hundreds of people that are of close contact yep. or that have COVID. so it doesn't even matter if you test negative on your first test mm -hmm. your second or your third mm -hmm. they need to because you're a close contact you have to stay in there for 14 days no yep. matter what so yep. Let's get back. Yeah, yeah. This is this was the case. This is the, this was the case. Like, and and the government was uh, very very um, explicit with these instructions and uh, warned the people. Like, this was understood by the entire population. Um, you just think that you can get away with not having to do it because, like, I don't know. You just think that you're better than everyone else, maybe. To this situation at your house. So the, these two policeman what is the choice they give you exactly it's come with us in this van or yeah. you get a five thousand dollar fine yeah so it's, you come with us we take you there and you're given a five thousand dollar fine or we will call a covid cab and right. we will not find you so it's pretty much you have to consent otherwise you're getting a five thousand dollar fine okay so then some hours later the covid cab arrives yeah, it was probably the policeman stayed at my driveway until this cab came. They said, can you please go pack a bag? Mm -hmm. So I went and packed a bag. And whilst I was packing my bag, I had my housemates at the front speaking to them. And they said, is she able to just do a test? And once that test comes back negative, is she able to, you know, leave and come and come back to normal life? Um, and they said, these police officers said, yes, we're pretty sure you, that all you have to do is return a negative test and you'll be released. So that gave me, <laughs> you know, that calmed me down knowing, okay, well, if I return a negative test, I can just go back home. So I got in the COVID cab 
and the police. I think we've got some footage that your mum took actually that we can play of you waving goodbye and getting into the back of a van. I've just um, come and she's, she's being taken away. But look at the COVID van. How professional. Long live yeah. COVID. <laughs> that is a COVID taxi, but is actually a casino bus. Yeah. So driving there and then. Yeah, yeah like, do you think that we have like special COVID uh, fucking buses? Just, just a fleet of COVID buses to to end up um, being fine about like no, like we we have we we have to use what we have and uh, what we what the government did was uh, subcontract a bunch of other companies including like uh, tra- people with uh, like um, transport fleets like casinos and stuff they outsourced all of this stuff you fucking idiots. And oh my gosh. The police police escorted me in, and then I never seen them police again. They left. They weren't allowed into the facility. So then yep. new police came, and they they were in charge. Obviously, I was very distressed. I was crying. I was saying this isn't fair. You know, it was just horrible to go through. And I shouldn't have lied. I stood there and I just said, "Can I please have a test now? Because I need these test results back, as I will be negative." And I, I later on, I was negative the whole time I was there. I was negative, mm-hmm. um, and I said, "Once these go negative, am I allowed to leave?" And she said, "No, you're here for the 14 days." So the and first I time stayed. you found out that you were there for 14 days was when you arrived. Yeah. Okay, so you, you you get taken to a room, is it a cabin? What's what's life like inside these camps? You literally get put on the back of a golf buggy with your bags, and these people are in hazmat suits and everything. They they don't want to come near you because they think you're infectious, and they literally drop you to your room, yep. and they leave you. They don't come and say anything they don't check up they don't do anything you know yep. you get delivered your meals True. once a day and yep. you are just left yeah I yeah that, that that that's that's exactly what uh, happens um yeah <sighs> allowed to talk to people i mean you, we, you, we could have have you spoken to people from inside the camp we can, but we're only allowed to stay in our designated areas, which is nothing, maybe two metres. Um, we have a, a deck that we're allowed to go out and maybe get a little bit of sunlight, but that is it. If you get caught off your decking without a mask on or anything, um, you get a $5,000 fine. And then that, that happened to me, so I didn't get a $5,000 fine. I got ri- a written up warning which is i actually sent you guys some footage on that as well yeah so tell Um, us about what we're about to see here so this is these are the officials inside the camp who are disciplining you because you were apparently not being contained within your area is that right so so yeah so she fucking so she lied to police she she's like no 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 oh well yeah if she was wearing a prison job so no she's describing exactly the exactly the situation i i know what these things worked as because um my um one of my exes uh, was a security guard um in the hotels this is exactly how they work um yeah this is this is exactly how they work um in the situation in this situation right um but at the end of the day, it's it's really not as big a deal. She she fucking lied to the police, right, about having a COVID test, and then she ended up like fr- friggin. <laughs> Hold on, let me just uh, finish this this uh, mofo. Wait, what? How did I die? Somehow I died. A lot of people died then. Oh yeah. 
Um, yeah, she's telling the truth about, like, all of the ways that it worked. Um, yeah. But it's really not a big deal. Like, you're there for 14 days, they give you food, they leave you, and that's it. And so she, so she, and she didn't um, follow the rules. So I went to the bin to put something in the bin that I was not wearing a mask. Mind you, I actually have an exemption. I don't need to wear a mask. I, <sighs> I told you. I told you, she's one of those. Have, yeah, a medical condition. What is your medical condition? What is your medical condition? Like, seriously. They all talk about their medical conditions, but they never want to say what they are. I think, is your medical condition is that you're a f lying fucking idiot? Is that your medical condition? Um, and the person that came to hand me the notice was another police officer mm -hmm. so, so what's to. what's the go so this i'm gonna give you a warning yeah it's an official warning that you have to stand above and obey the rules while you get yeah and that's we have to go to the rules again i don't care so am i allowed to go to the laundry you're allowed to go to the laundry but you got to wear a mask yeah yeah right yeah. Eh? and you definitely can't go up the fencing right so you're allowed to go to the laundry yeah that's always been the case yeah right so if i was sitting just here which is right near the fence why are these guys in a cabin that's right near the fence. It makes no sense, does it? Yeah, but you can't leave your balcony to go to the fence to talk to somebody else. That's what's obvious, yeah? So if I was Again, at that balcony... Have sense. So there's, we always, there has to be lines everywhere drawn, yeah? And one of the lines... Is she's just been... She's, she's being a fucking... She's just trying to, like... Fucking take liberties. It's like, yeah, they're next to the fence. Lucky them. Sucks to be you. Deal with it. Holy fuck. Oh, these people. You cannot go to someone else. Where it makes no sense, where it doesn't seem right to, that is the line, and that's what the law is there, yeah? and that's how yeah, I go. Apologetic yeah? my the ass. Law. What a show direction. There's a law that says show that. Show direction, yep. There's a show direction there, yeah? and how the behaviour must be done, especially in this area, because it's much more highly infectious, and likely to have infected people, yeah? Highly infectious when all of us people are negative. So, so far, the risk is still very high, yeah? Yeah. Just while you're here, can we just do that? Otherwise, the next time it's a $5,000 fine. We don't want to do that. It's a $5,000 fine, $5, fine if what? If, if, if you breach again. If if I walk out onto that path. Without your mask on, yeah. with no reason other than the wrong If I cross that yellow line. That yeah. I've broken the rule. That I've broken the rule, I will be issued with a $5,000 fine. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I could have, we could even do that now, but we're giving the warning first. Have a chat with you because it's a big fine. Rather just do the right thing, yeah? Like I said, I'm not here to fight with you. Yeah. I don't want to fight with you. Yeah. I just want everybody to do the right thing, and yeah. unfortunately, it's my job to make sure they do. I don't care. The ins and outs. Yeah. I've got nothing to do with me. I'm just here to make sure the rules are here, yeah? Uh, yeah. So what okay. did that experience make you think? Like, what, what... Well, they, well, okay. Before she answers, let me tell you what that experience was. Um, she was told not to cross that yellow line without a mask on. Uh, she decided to do that. Um, and then was butt hurt when she got into trouble for doing the thing that you're not allowed to do. And then they gave you her a warning and didn't find her and she's cracking the shits. Was your feeling about being in that situation with those people in control of your every movement. Oh, it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. You feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've done something wrong. It's inhumane what they're doing. Like, Well, you did do something wrong. You literally did. You were explained. You were explained in no like uncertain detail what you were allowed to do and what you were not allowed to do and you decided not to do what you were supposed to do because you just wanted you just decided that you had a medical exemption uh, for wearing a mask which is utter, utter bullshit I'd need, I would love to see one of these medical exemptions what are you doing? what are you looking at? You, know. you, you are so small You they just overpower you and you're literally nothing it's like you do what we say or you're in trouble we'll lock you up for longer yeah they were even threatening me that if i was to do this again we will extend your time in here 
So the, the officers within the camp have the power to keep you there longer if you misbehave. That's what that was saying, yep. And at one stage, is it true that they offered you... I mean, you why didn't she show that part of the recording? Wait, what's this? What's his? Someone's being racist in the server. Valium? Yeah, so because I was so distressed and I said, can you just please let me out for a walk or a run like I'm in this little box and I can't move? Yeah, can so I so she was trying to fucking bend the rules that, so that she didn't have to do what everyone else had to do. That's what this is. She was just she's just a privileged little piece of shit. So yeah, she was offered Valium uh, because she said she had anxiety. So she probably was seen by a fucking medical professional who said that that was an option. please, I'm, you know, I'm anxious, I'm feeling not well, just I need to get out. And they literally said, we've got a doctor calling you and we'll get some Valium prescribed to you that you can call us anytime you like and you can have Valium. Just to calm you down. Yeah. So when did this end, Haley? You were in there for the full 14 days? Yeah, correct. Yeah, 14 days. And that was a few days ago that you came out? Yeah, I think I've been out a week and a half now. So during that whole time, how many times were you tested and did you ever test positive? Never tested positive at all. And I was tested three times. So at the moment, you haven't had COVID? Never had COVID. And I was of close contact to someone, never got it. And I was treated literally like a criminal. Yeah, because you're What's being, you since you you're came being out? a a privileged bitch. I no longer have a job like, as I was casual at where I was working, so I am now unemployed. So um, you were working at it in a and and um, yeah, uh, must suck to live in a country with unemployment benefits. A store or what? How did that happen? Yeah, so I was just working in a retail store. Um, obviously, casual. You don't get paid any sick leave or for being away from your job. So. Um, I wasn't getting paid or anything whilst I was being in there. They compensated me, I think, $1,500 for the two weeks. Um, and, and that was all. So you've lost your job? Yeah. Now currently unemployed because of this situation. There's mm. been a lot of press. Well, I mean, like, that's that's a problem that um, definitely needs to be sol solved. I would say that um, Australia needs to really think about having uh, better protections for uh, future problems at this level, like making it uh, legal to fire anyone um, or reduce their hours uh, for having to having gone um, on a, a hiatus due to COVID. Like, 
pretty sure that that stuff was in place anyway, so it sounds like she was probably fired for something else. <laughs> She's a bitch. <laughs> but yeah, who knows? In Australia media about how these camps are really luxurious and it's like having a holiday. Did it feel like a holiday for you? No. No way. You are literally... They look about the same size as the holiday homes on Rottnest Island, honestly. But uh, the the difference is that you can't leave the hut. So saying that it's a holiday home is a little bit of a, a little bit of a hyperbole there. Like honestly, like no, they're not they're not like a holiday home. It's not fun. Nobody likes going to going into uh, fourteen day um, isolation. It's not fun. Um, I understand. Whoa, what the hell is this? This guy just disappeared out of nowhere. What the hell? Um, yeah, so, like, yeah, I understand completely why people would not want to go into um, uh, solitary confinement or uh, isolation. Uh, even though it's not really solitary confinement, it's just, like, no. You're, 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 you're stuck there, and it's not fun. Uh, d deal with it. I'm sorry. Literally trapped in a box on your decking with fences all around you, um, cameras. Like, I, I, I find it really interesting as well, these people never, ever seem to have any idea, like, they, they, they never sort of, like, focus on themselves. They're, they're, sorry, they're always focused on themselves, um, rather than the people that they're trying to protect. Like it's never about um, it's never about um, going into isolation in order to, to protect to to just just because of the chance of you infecting someone else like that matters and that's why we uh, handled COVID so well here in Australia is because we had these stringent me me measures in place like we we didn't see in Perth here in Perth where we had the most stringent measures of isolation and mandates we saw le we missed like about three or four of the surges that the rest of australia faced because of our measures of protection like it worked the the statistics speak for themselves the results are there look them up look at the difference between perth per capita deaths Versus um, Canberra or like New South Wales, fucking New South Wales was not doing well. No, um, I'm not going to pretend like um, uh, isolation, 14 day isolation is a fun experience for anyone. That sucks. And it would have sucked to be there, especially near her. But she lied from the start. Um, she was being a bitch about it as well. Didn't didn't want to listen to anyone. Broke the rules. Was completely like, yeah. You have no sympathy from me, honey. It's everywhere, like it is. It's just astounding. Like you're literally treated like a prisoner in there. So let's zoom out a little bit, Haley. You've been living through this for the past couple of years. What is happening, do you think, to, to Australia and to your country? Well, it's, it's so, it's so hard. It's like people aren't, you know, we just abide by the rules and we're just going with the flow, but this flow doesn't seem to be getting any better. Like, you know, we have hardly any numbers and they're doing this to us still. It's yeah, that, that's why we have hardly ever any numbers. Holy shit. Every time the restrictions were lifted, we saw a surge in COVID cases. Every single time. Ugh, she speaks as if she has experience being in a prison. No, no, the opposite. Well, anyway, like everyone has experience being in a prison. What do you think the pro What do you think the schooling system is um, um, a model of? It's just. It's just crazy. I originally lived in Victoria, Melbourne, where it was really, really bad, and we we had lockdowns. We've been in lockdowns for months and months. And the reason why I moved to Darwin was to get away from that because Darwin wasn't as bad and the lockdowns weren't happening. So once I moved up here, it was all it was all fine. And then that one case happened, and it 
it's just crazy. Like they locked the whole state down. Yeah, yeah. The one case happened. Yeah, Darwin, WA. It happened, and then um, yeah, we we fixed it up. All right. This this is gonna be this is gonna, gonna need my my attention now. Enough of the bish. I'm gonna defeat this guy, and then we're gonna um, be done for the day. But I need to hopefully, hopefully, someone will come and help. I don't know. Well, while I wait, um, I guess I'll put her back on. Um, um, and just sending heaps and heaps of people there because this obviously Darwin is the only place that has this quarantine camp in Australia. Because in the international media, it's been reported that Australia is kind of relaxing a bit, or at least the rules about international travel are relaxing. They no longer plan to have zero COVID. They're going to understand that they need to manage it. Does it feel like it's getting better over there? Oh, I think every state is different. Um, at the moment, Darwin is really, really harsh with it, with what's going on and stuff. I think other states are, are relaxing as more people are getting vaccinated. Um, but the unvaccinated people who choose not to be are just looked at like prisoners and that they're doing the wrong thing. So well, what are you going to do next, Hayley? But th th they are doing the wrong thing. Like, it makes sense that they would uh, be looked at as if they were doing the wrong thing because they are. What? What, what comes next for you? What comes next? Well, find a job. That's definitely. Um, and really want to get awareness out to what is going on. Like these camps are getting built all over the world. I know there's another one getting built in Victoria at the moment. And well, yeah. as I said, it doesn't matter if you're not vaccinated. One, you know, you have one dosage of the vaccination or two. It doesn't yeah. matter your vaccination status. Yeah. You can get sent to these camps yeah. if you it's it's all about stopping the spread. Holy shit! We have to do this. Ah. Ah. So dumb. You are of close contact, like I was, um, or if you lie to authorities, as as I found out because I said that I had a test when I hadn't. And then I found out later that um, I was in there for punishment. You he found you out that. later? CDC. Proof? Center Disease Control. So they, I found so they say that your sentence, your two week incarceration was actually punishment for having said you got a test and, and when you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Proof. Where when other people Proof. were of close contact and they were allowed to self isolate at home where there was probably about 10 of them and I was the only one that got sent there. And that's what I was saying. Like, it doesn't make sense. Why am I the only one here? I, I want answers to this. And that was the only time that I got an answer is when I rang CDC and they said, yeah, there's a high chance that you're in there for punishment because you lied to authorities. At any stage of this process, did anyone I would not tell call you that, your rights? I would not call that, wait, CDC. Wait, what's this? What's CDC again? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Ah, this guy's friggin' hard to kill. Where is he? Where is he? Oh my gosh. Oh fuck. That's a lot of shit. Oh, I died. Fucking rude. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they win. We win. Woohoo! Sorry. Just one. Champion's champion. Got an achievement for it. Like a boss.
All right. Have you had any contact with a lawyer? Has there been any kind of legal no. process? No. Nothing. No. I've had nothing. No, I... of course of course you've had no contact with a lawyer because you've got nothing. Because <laughs> you're a lying bitch. Holy shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Have you, have you, there's been legal, this sounds like a legal matter. It's like, oh, you know, oh, you fucking hell. Oh, you were punished? No. No, you weren't punished, honey. You heard what you wanted to hear. What they most probably said, but like, uh, before we go into that, I just want to double check this. Yeah, Center for Disease Control. Okay, cool. Um, what they probably said to you is that they couldn't trust you because you lied, so they have to put you in isolation because they can't trust you because you lied. You're co you you're looking at it from well, you think that it's uh oh hello um punishment when really it's they can't trust you because you're a liar. And I don't trust you either. Holy um, moly. Yeah, literally it's just it's so hard. No no one really wants nobody knows. That's the thing. So it's like you're on yeah, your do. own in these situations and you know <sighs> you just left that, that's all like there's no help when you're in this camp and there's no help when you're out of this camp like it's just you do your time do you mean help and we'll leave help? you alone that's all there is yeah so we've yeah, heard that people have that's been trying how it to works. escape this howard's camp in the past few days the escape. Like <laughs> yeah i did hear that i think you mean you mean like break quarantine it's not escaping it's called breaking quarantine my goodness these people are such friggin' princesses. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I have to do... I have to do what's... Uh, I have to do the right thing. Oh no, what, what... How awful for me. Oh my gosh. Three people have escaped. I don't know if they've found them yet. Um, but... Yeah, Broke they have quarantine. escaped. And, and Not do escaped. you understand why they would do that? I mean, give us a sort of summary of what your mental state has been like during this period and, and what the whole experience has done to you. Oh, trust me, when I was in there, I was thinking, how do I, how do I escape? But, you know, what are going to be the consequences when, if I do and if I get caught? You know, it just it's an ongoing thing. Why do what if there's vaccines? Um, oh, your mental health, it's just, as I said, like you're in a box, your mind's just going a million miles an hour, you feel horrible, you feel, yeah, it's just horrible what they're putting people through because you feel like you've done something wrong when you haven't. You All you were doing is going about your normal life and you were close contact with someone who was ill. That's all it is. Hayley, thank you so much for telling us your story. No worries, thank I you for having me. I thought about starting this wild scale prison That was Hayley Hodgson. Thanks to her for telling her story. Idiot. She what joined a privileged us from bitch. Darwin in the Northern Territories in Australia, telling us about her last two or oh, three weeks, Territory, which has been, to say the least, quite unusual. And let's just Nobody remember really that this is Darwin. a person who has not had COVID, even now. And here she is, she's lost her job, and she's just spent 14 days in voluntary incarceration. Yeah, I, I, I call bullshit I on her losing, uh, losing her job the end goal quarantine. This is. Thank uh, you is that a serious her, question? to you for joining. This was unheard. Is that a serious question? Like, like, do I really need to answer that? To stop the spread of COVID, what do you, what do you think? What do you think that um, quarantine is? What do you think that? What, what do you think that? Um, um, yeah, and there's a new flu vaccine every year. What's your point? <laughs> what are the word, what does the word endemic mean to you? Like we're at a point now where the COVID situation has been handled so badly worldwide. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. The flu kills less old people than COVID does.
because of because millions and millions of people have died by whose numbers by the world health organization's number by the cdc's numbers by like all of the organizations that count this stuff you're an idiot an absolute idiot i'm sorry but like if you're asking me why do we need to quarantine if there's vaccines then you obviously have zero knowledge about what COVID is. I would have to explain, like, like I would to my five-year-old nephew, to you, if that's the level of your understanding. Like, just get the fucking vaccine. <sighs> just get the fucking vaccine. Like, you don't even understand what, uh, qu why, why you would need to quarantine. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Well, cool. Well, so, suffer and die, and I hope that no one that you care about gets sick and die. Cool. Have a good one. I'm not here to educate you on shit, on shit that you shouldn't really need to be educated on. Just get your vaccines, go in quarantine if you need to, and do your part for society. If not, go fuck yourself. Hmm? You were trying to have an intelligent conversation, starting out with one of the dumbest things that someone has said today. You call that intelligent? You call... you call... Asking me why we would need to quarantine if there's vaccines. You call that intelligence? After we're over three years into a global pandemic, which has become almost endemic. Where the governments around the world has constantly and consistently bombarded us with all of the information that we need to know about this. You ask why? I think that quarantine is necessary if vaccines exist. That's not intelligent. That's moronic. That's moronic. And all you're doing is trying to run away from that original question because you know I'm right. You're just a troll. You're either a troll or you're incapable of an actual intelligent discussion. That's why I'm making fun of you now, because it's much more fun to make fun of idiots than it is to engage with them, like, in good faith. So, like, any chance for you and me to have a intelligent conversation ended when you didn't start with an intelligent question. You just basically showed me your power level from the start. It's fa it's fabulous watching people rage as well. Yeah, yeah, I did because it's funny. What do you think? Who do you think I am? Do you think I care about anti-vaxxers? Um, you have not presented one. Do you, what 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 do you think a fact is? This this motherfucker thinks that facts that that they presented facts here. You, you don't even know what a fact is. You've come into a con into a stream with someone smarter than you, and who knows more about this than you, and made the mistake of asking the dumbest question that you could ask. You made the dumbest question. Yeah. And, and, and this is just fabulous, and, and then they, they just rage when I don't engage with any of their points, and just call them and call them names because that's much more fun to me. Yes, very silent. <laughs> watch it, watch it, watch it. Next thing will be like you can't, you can't even argue with me. You can't have an intelligent discussion, man. Like I, I I'm just doing, I'm just talking to you because this is entertaining to me. I get off on like making fun of people like you. Um, you're not here to have a conversation, you're here to, like, be anti-vax and a prick. So, uh, yeah, why why the fuck would I ever give any credence to anything you have to say if you don't even understand why 
we need to vaccinate and quarantine. You, you just, you're just not smart enough to have a conversation about this. This is why people like you, it's because of people like you that we need to have stringent mandates in place. I don't need to. I'm a, I'm a voice on the internet. Smarter people than me have already debunked everything that you can possibly throw at me. And I'm happy to have a conversation with smart people, but like, I, I, you're, you're the dumbest person that I've come across in the last month so like why would i even bother when it's much more fun just to make fun of you who are the smarter people well that's the question isn't it so the people that you have decided are uh, are not as smart as you with you and the rest of your horse paste eating horse paste eating brethren Oh my gosh, I can't believe that there's still people like this in this day and age when there's this much information out there about COVID. It's incredible. But yeah, COVID, no COVID on Mars. COVID is a lie. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what my what my standpoint is. I'm not here to change minds. I'm here to meet like minds. I don't give a fuck if you are anti-vax. Um, I, I, I'm not going to change your mind. There is, a, is absolutely no way to change your mind. The people I care about already understand basic things like quarantine. I, I, I want to have intelligent conversations. I don't want to have dumbass conversations trying to convince anti-vaxxers um, about like established facts. Like, you, you've brought up every single, like, easily debunked thing that is so de easily debunked that all you need to do, right? All you need to do is Google. Exactly. Um, then I do not care about your input into this. Much like I do not care about men's input into uh, women's bodies. I have to find a mushroom in Chillwind Depths. Where is the friggin' mushroom then? You never said you were an anti-vaxxer either. It's pretty. Yeah. Yes, I did. Because it's it was it's funny to uh, do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny to assume that. Where is the... Yes, Rigor to remember his Argonian friends taking... Where is this? Right at the back it says... Oh, I see it. So is it funny to make fun of a guy in a dress wearing a crown? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you show me one? <laughs> all you've got, all you've got is transphobic remarks now. Oh, boo-hoo. Oh. Are you mad? You mad that I didn't let you um, spew your uh, anti-COVID nonsense? I didn't like give you a platform, huh? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. You're trans. So is Blair White. Cry me a fucking river, bitch. Hmm. Ah, oh, it's so easy with these peeps. I love it. Ah, there it is. Mushroom. Oh, hello. As well. So you got any other like intelligent conversation uh, besides your complete mon misunderstanding of uh, COVID knowledge or what? I'm just gonna drift into transphobic comments. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really get off by laughing at men in dresses, but uh, you do you boo. A thing. Damn, I want to get into there.
I do need to end the stream soon, though. I need to go to the work for my capitalist Help! overlords. Okay, well, good for you. Wait, so you want to have a conversation about something that you know nothing about? That is... That is the second dumbest thing I've heard today. Your, your version of what uh, is considered intelligent is just really, really, like... I, I, I'm just amazed. My brain is in recovery mode from, like, these high-level intelligent conversations that you keep on uh, trying to have. Like, where the frick is the rest of them? Oh my gosh, can you, like, go away, spiders? Here we go. Well, yes. That is it for me today. Thank you, Wicked Tailey, whatever, however you pronounce it, for um, being a hilarious pet for, for the day. Um, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, see if I can fix up my uh, Hodus flight sticks. I really want to get back into Star Citizen. That'll be fun. Um, otherwise, though, um, I shall see you next time. So until then, take care of yourself. Uh, take care of yourself and take care of someone else. And yeah. Bye-bye. Love you all. Mwah.